It's homecoming weekend on Lafayette's campus. They welcome in the Bucknell Bison. They come in with an overall record of 3-3, three 0-1 three, in the Patriot League. They'll be taking on the uh, Patriot League's first place team, the Lafayette Leopards. They come in at 2-0 oh in the league, 2-5 and five overall. The officials for this afternoon's ball game. Henry Wimberg is the referee. Chris Grogan, the umpire. Tim Kenny is the head linesman. The line judge is Lane Ulrich. The side judge, Dan Foreman. The field judge, Brian Campbell. The back judge is Brian Wisniewski. Beautiful afternoon for football. It's uh, right around the low 70s. Very little wind at all. It's comfortable. The sky is basically cloudless. And we can immediately go to the tail of the tape presented by Easton Hospital. If you need an ER fast, try their ER. With their 30-minute or less ER pledge, you won't want to go anywhere else. And as you look at the numbers, Mike, we look at some other numbers, too. Rushing average, Lafayette 9.1, Bucknell 76.2. Passing, Lafayette has the edge, 221 yards a game to 186 for Bucknell. Total yardage, not all that far apart, 242 to 263. It should be an interesting ball game because both these defenses are outstanding. Yeah, and both of them show up today. It's going to be the one that kind of bends and, and doesn't break, I think. You know, Lafayette's probably going to look to take some shots down the field because against an offensive uh, uh, team where you struggle to run the football and a strong defensive front, you got to take shots in the secondary. they got to be quick. I think a guy like Matt Morazic, a guy who's kind of been the um, behind the, the scenes a little bit, I think Matt Morazic can be big in this game, get downfield on a couple of these small corners and make some plays. There you get a look at the head coach of the Bucknell Boast Bison in his eighth season. That is Joe Susan. Joe comes in 38 and 51 overall at Bucknell. He also coached at Davidson and, in fact, had an undefeated 10 and 0 season at Davidson in 2000. He was an assistant at Princeton and, in fact, he recruited John Garrett to play football uh, as a wide receiver. Burdick will kick it off. It's end over end. And it's going to come down to Rashawn Merriweather. He'll collect it at the four-yard line. And he's going to get tripped up right at the 20-yard line. A good open field tackle by Garrett Van Itali. Let's go down to John. Gary, Mike, we heard you guys talk earlier about the importance of this football game. When you're in a 17 conference, that's six league games. And as Yogi Berra used to like to say, it gets late early. That said, keep an eye out for Lafayette's number 84, Nick Pearson. Healthy again, back in the lineup. He was a dynamic player early in the season. We already have a score, John, in the Patriot League. Colgate beat Holy Cross today, 45-7. to So Colgate goes to 2-1. and one. They are the next opponent for Bucknell. But first of all, it's the Lafayette Leopard. Sean O'Malley will hand the ball off on a little bit of an end around to Rocco Palumbo. And Rocco, still on his feet, will dive forward for a first down as he'll pick up 10 yards exactly before he is tackled by Mark Piles, who is the strong side linebacker. Uh, Lafayette comes out with a fullback in the backfield. Two backs, uh, CJ and Mill back there getting a start at the tailback position. Really nice kick out block there by Will Eisler. He ended up kicking out the defensive end. And we've seen Rocco Palumbo made a big play against Holy Cross, makes another big play to start this series. Sean O'Malley is completing 63% of his passes. He has 11 touchdown passes on the year. 10 interceptions as they're going to get a quick out out here. And, Mike, there is the kind of pass you were talking about on your uh, bit on the uh, Internet as Colin Janov comes up to make the tackle at the 29, a loss of one. And you get a good look at Sean O'Malley. Again, Sean's been very good at times, and other times, honestly, just looks like a freshman. Throw the ball into traffic. But that ball, again, getting the ball, like you said, Gary, out to C.J. Emil, just a, a tough block for Matt Morazic and a great play by the boundary corner to trip him up for a loss. So it brings up a second and 11 from the Lafayette 29-yard line. O'Malley looks like he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Two-step drop. He's looking. He's looking. He'll fire. Has his man, but nothing happening. As catching the football is C.J. Emil. And the tackle, again, comes from Mark Piles. Here is the starting offense. Well, you see C.J. Emil in there for Deshaun Brown. But both of them are going to get a lot of playing time, catching the ball out of the backfield. Matt Morazic again, a guy that's just looking for a big breakout game. Rocco Palumbo's been the go-to guy up front, an offensive line, again, that struggled to move the football on the ground, but they've done a nice job protecting O'Malley. They have not really uh, uh, had a lot of problems in pass protection. It's really the run blocking that's kind of been their bugaboo. Lafayette has gotten a first down on third down 33% of the times this year. Bucknell's defense 
They've given up a first down 35% of the time. Running around, firing it out here, and that is intercepted. That's going to be a touchdown. As bringing the ball back and going in for the touchdown, the pass off the back foot was intercepted by Drew Newcomb. The strong safety, he got his first start last week at Cornell, and he comes up with an interception and a quick touchdown. Well, anytime you throw the ball late and to the outside, you're asking for trouble, and that ball had to travel 20 to 35 yards as you see O'Malley trying to get over there to make a touchdown-saving tackle, but just a beautiful play by the corner, a good read, but a mistake by the freshman. Again, I saw him last week against Harvard, did not step up and climb the pocket. There was pressure at his feet, so you can't blame him for that, but you cannot throw the ball late and to the outside. Bucknell for the touchdown. John Burdick will kick the extra point. The snap was high, but it was brought down nicely by Jack Horan, and the extra point is good. 12.56 on the scoreboard. First quarter, and Bucknell dramatically scores on an interception. Welcome back. Well, we talked about the pass defense of Bucknell. As you get a look at our drone shot over Fisher Stadium, well, the defense came up big with uh, Drew Newcomb, just a junior, 5'11", 180 pounds. Mentions first start, and he looked pretty good on that play, Mike. Yeah, he did. And again, that was just a, an out pattern. So you run the slant on the outside, and you run Joey Chenoweth on the slide. But that ball's got to be in Joey Chenoweth's stomach, probably on the third step as he turns his head, so he can now advance the ball up the field for the possible first down. But not sure where Sean had his eyes. Maybe on the slant was taken away. And then, obviously, the pressure at his feet made him back up. And what I've seen the last couple of weeks from Sean is a tendency to retreat and throw off his back foot. So I'm not sure if that's uh, something that needs to be addressed. But again, a lot of throws off his back foot. And the last thing you want to do is throw it late to the outside, and it cost him seven. So we'll start all over again as Lafayette took the first possession after winning the toss. They did not defer. And they end up getting burned by the defense. As this one will come down to C.J. Emil, who will put the knee down, and the ball will come out to the 25 yard line where the Leopards will have it again and when you look at Bucknell they give up 23.3 points a game that's number one in the Patriot League and they get 21.2 here's their D well how happy are they to have Abdullah Anderson back just a phenomenal player really an all-league and all-American player at the D tackle he got hurt a couple weeks ago had a little knee problem sat out last week had the bye week came back so he should be at full health but I love their linebackers Piles Richard is a, excuse me, he's a kid from right down here in Downingtown West. Moved to Utah, came back, signed with Bucknell. Just a terrific player. Their linebackers in the 4-2-5 can run. Emil again in the backfield. Brian Marine, their cornerback, is also a preseason All-American. Looking, running, and throwing the ball away. I think he wanted to go to Rocco Palumbo. He was picked up step for step, but uh, Morazic downfield had uh, quite a bit of space between him and his defender. Never saw Mark Morazic, Matt yeah, Morazic. Absolutely good read as well uh, by the defense for Bucknell. They picked up the shallow uh, drag that time. And the back, the really only play they had was on the backside Taggart, who was the backside tight end. But they had Wadsworth in the second level as well taken care of. Marine is on Morazic at the bottom of your screen. As we look at a second and ten. Give the ball off, handed to C.J. Emile, and he gets nothing. Lafayette came in averaging just 9.1 yards per game rushing the football. Good play that time by 92, Trevor Fenimore, who was in on the tackle. Trevor Fenimore, senior defensive lineman. They all feed really off of Anderson. He's going to get the double teams, which allows other guys up front to get the single blocks. And that time again, just running the ball sideways, really can't get his foot in the ground. And when you can't get your shoulder square line of scrimmage, you're going to end up losing yardage. And now Lafayette again faced with a tough situation here for the freshman quarterback. Scoreboard says third and 12. It's really closer to third and 13 for Lafayette. As there's the quick fake, and they get the ball out to Chenoweth. He's got a hole. Joey Chenoweth, oh, a shoestring tackle. Or he may have gone as getting down around his feet was Brandon Benson, the, the weak side linebacker, safety, the weak safety, and he gets the tackle. It stops the touchdown. Now, these are the best things that Sean O'Malley does. He gets the ball out quick to the guys that can make plays and watch this shoestring tackle as Gary said right there otherwise Joey's off to the races but get the ball out actually pick a receiver find out where he's throwing the ball that's when he's at his best the ball comes out quick so a 15 yard pickup it is a Lafayette first down they have the ball on their own 38 yard line in motion as he often is Dylan Wadsworth hand the ball off C.J. Emile he'll get positive yardage get up over the 40 looks like they're going to mark him at the 41 
yard line. Has a nice little hole opened up that time as he quickly hit it. The tackle was made by Drew Newcomb, the guy with the interception and the touchdown. Yeah, Gain of three. Of, yeah, kind of things that C.J. Mill did a lot in high school in Ohio. That downhill run, put his foot in the ground. That was a pretty good job blocking over on that right side. Lafayette doing a little bit better there to pick up a couple yards on first down with Bradley and Donnelly. Second and seven. This time they hand the ball off and trying to come this way. That's a nice little move thrown up that time as Lafayette will be close to but not get the first down as running with the football. We haven't seen that play. Dylan Wadsworth as uh, he will get the ball to the 46. He'll pick up five. He is tackled by Simeon Page. So during the week, Coach Garrett says, we're going to hand the ball to you, Dylan. And he goes, you're going to hand what? me the ball? <laughs> but Dylan, he's just, he's just so versatile. I mean, he could have cut it up inside. A big guy to the outside. When you're trying to, as a corner to tackle a 240-pound tight end, he picks up good yardage. Manageable third down. I like to see O'Malley use his legs if it's not there. He can pick this up by just stepping up in the pocket and making a play. Dylan definitely put his foot in the ground that time, as uh, Mike often alludes to. Back to throw, quick out. That's a first down. So Lafayette will move the chains. As again, they get rid of it quickly to C.J. Emile. He makes the play. The tackle is made by Mark Piles. And Lafayette gets their third first down of the game. Now Malley again reading the backside. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. Doesn't have the slant. Goes with the slide. Very similar to the play that was intercepted. But this time he thread basically half the field as you get a look at Coach Garrett right there trying to get some rhythm going with his freshman quarterback. So we're back to a first and 10 right at midfield. This time in motion is 87, Jake Taggart. Handing the ball off to Emil, and he's going to get tripped up. He needed to make that one more cut, could not make it, and he could not get around Lulele, who makes that tackle, and also Brian Marine. One thing I'm noticing about the Bucknell defense is they're not only putting eight, seven, eight guys in the box, but they're putting five and six guys on the line of scrimmage. And when you do that, what they're doing is really trying to make every block a single block, trying to take advantage of some of the younger offensive linemen for Lafayette. I think they got to take a shot down the field. Matt Morazic or Palumbo, one-on-one -on -one coverage, a lot of it. Morazic has one-on-one -on -one at the bottom of your screen, and now backing off that one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're going to look downfield. No, they will not. Rocco Palumbo will catch it. He's not going to get much, however. That's just going to be a two-yard pickup. He immediately is hit and run out of bounds by Brandon Benson. And again, the ball just kind of didn't know if the snap was late or not, but it looked like the last guy to move was the center. I thought maybe it was going to be a legal procedure because the ball came up late, and actually Donnelly backpedaled out of there and ended up running into his quarterback. To give the freshman a lot of credit for keeping his poise and just taking what he could get out of that. So Lafayette now across the 50 with a third down. Remember, they completed their last third down play on a really nice play by O'Malley. O'Malley now 5 for 7 for 24 yards. He has thrown an interception that was returned for a touchdown. Here is a big third and 7. And one again down here at the bottom with Morazic. Back to throw and going nowhere. No time at all. That time is coming in with a sack is Simeon Page. And for Simeon, that is his third sack of the uh, season. And he, too, got his first career start against C uh, Cornell last week and had eight tackles in that game. Well, watch Simeon Page. They don't even block him right there. Looks like Lafayette's supposed to be turning it back. And it looks like on the outside that time, Colin Bradley turned out and Donnelly kind of stayed where he was. So that A gap was wide open. So some miscommunication with the protection up front between the senior center and the sophomore guard. Nobody picked up Page. He had a beeline right to the quarterback. Well, we got our first punt of the ball game out of Michael Turk. We'll have two great punters here. Leading the Patriot League in punting is the Bucknell punter, Peachin. As good coverage that time by Lafayette. Alan Butler with the return. It's 7.46 on the clock, first quarter. Bucknell 7. Lafayette nothing. We'll get a look at the Bucknell offense. First and 10 as we get a look for the first time at John Charlanzio. Yes, it is Luke's brother out of Florham Park in New Jersey. John Charlanzio has earned the starting position. Back to throw the ball, and he's got a wide open white jersey as he'll kick, give the ball and drop it off to Jack Horan, who is his favorite receiver. And Horan was left all by himself for a 28-yard pickup. Yeah, he was the backside guy. This is the same play Lafayette ran, but you see he's going to come from the left side here. So he just drags across, and that first look by Charlanzio doesn't have the flat route by the front side tight end, finds the backside tight end. So the safety, either crossing or you see Thomas, has got to come down and take the cross, and then somebody handles the over-the-top post. 
Phil Parham was in on that tackle. Horan, that's his 24th catch. He leads the team in receptions as they hand the ball off to Chad Freshnock. And he is tackled by 45, Trent Crossan. Let's take a look at the offense. Their starting running back, Joey DeFloria, is out with an injury. Yeah, Freshnock did a nice job last year as a freshman against Lafayette, scored two touchdowns. But up front, their offensive line, for me, seems to be getting better and better as they play more together. They had a revamped offensive line there. Uh, in, but they have good receivers, just like Lafayette does as well. And you got to keep an eye on the guy who ran 6'3 against some of the smaller Lafayette corners. Carlanze was also 6'3, 190. He's a sophomore. He'll throw a bullet out here, turning it upfield very quickly once again is Jack Horan. Horan out of Far Hills, New Jersey. He came in with 334 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He had a 60 yard catch the last two ball games. Coming up to make the tackle, Clay Rush. Yeah, very too pitcher. much space right there. Again, to get a look at the Lafayette defense and playing two great games in the Patriot League. Really stepped up last week was a little bit of an aberration, but guys like Brandon Ryan leading the nation in uh, in tackles. Philip Parham's got five interceptions. They need to step up today and take away the run for Charlonzio to throw the football. We're we'll gonna have a running play that's not gonna get much. As after the eight yard pickup for the first down, tackle is made by Anthony Judis. Judis has been outstanding as he makes a lot of things available for the linebackers, Mike. But what he does, he's got so much upper body strength that he gets away from blocks quickly and he gets away violently. And that allows him to pursue with his shoulder square like he did right there. And these are the situations Lafayette has to take advantage of. Two tight ends exclusively this entire drive for Bucknell. Second and nine. And they hand the ball off. Fresh knocks not going anywhere as coming up and meeting him immediately again was Jadis. Jadis came in with 25, now has 27 tackles. 6'2", 275, the junior transfer from Syracuse University, no gain. Yeah, great job. Again, moving the defensive line a little bit. You saw Jadis take that little step to his right into the backside A gap, and the front side guard never overtook him. So he steps through again. Keep the shoulders square. It's a big down for the Lafayette defense press man I think they have to do when they're on both guys. Showing blitz here are the Lafayette Leopards and they are coming. Back to throw. Charlonzio throws it much too high as the pass was intended to the right side for Andrew Podbielski. Podbielski who has eight catches that one no chance of making it even though he's 6'4". Yeah the pressure was kind of closing in on Charlonzio. Lafayette did a little bit of a delayed blitz. They got to be aware right now of the possibility of a fake. So you leave your defense on the field you go punt safe and you make sure there's no fake, because this is a situation here where Bucknell can easily not lose any field position, so Joey Chenoweth puts his heels on the 10. But really nice job that time by the defense, and a delayed blitz, so a little change up. Peachin is going to hurt his average punting from here. He averages 45 yards a punt. He's number one in the Patriot League, and he'll down this one at the one, maybe the two-yard line. Peachin is sixth in the FCS in punting average, 45 yards a punt. This one, they'll get credit for a 35-yarder. Yeah, and you can see the backspin on that. So often nowadays, these punters, what they do is they punt with the toe down. So the ball, tip of the ball will be down. Watch him point down, and he basically kicks it like a kickoff. So is it going? It's an end over end kick. No chance for Chenoweth. That ball lands right around the five-yard line, takes a shot forward. Great special teams by Bucknell, pins the Lafayette offense deep and you cannot make a mistake right here. Lafayette's going to come out with two tight ends. Okay, almost actually three tight ends in the ball game and two back. So they got to get this ball at least out five, ten yards to give themselves some room maybe to punt this football out of there. I think they want to check and make sure that ball somehow did not cross the plane of the goal line. I believe I can't imagine any other discussion going on right now up here in the booth and referee Henry Weinberg. Well, it took a very quick moot shot roll. Here's the call. The play equipment is not functioning now. We will notify you when it's operational again. So they are having problems You're with the luck. replay <laughs> equipment and uh, so they could not get a look. Watch it take a, sh a quick shot forward. I'm wondering if someone's foot was on the line. No, I don't think that ball crossed the line. That's a great play right there. It just may have been just to uh, let the officials know the replay booth was not working. Yeah. Aaron Brown did a nice job 27 there just tapping it back into play. And didn't allow it to touch the end line. Well, the Leopards have to get out. 
of this area of the field. Fake to C.J. Emile. Here's a quick nice. out. Nicely designed play as they drop the ball off to Will Eisler. Eisler's going to turn it upfield and get a first down as he'll pick up 14 yards before the tackle is made by Brian Marine. Beautiful. That's just a great play call by John Garrett. He comes out, shows the running formation, play action. You slip your fullback into the flat. So Will Eisler, we've seen good things on the field when Will Eisler's on the field. Remember against the Fordham, they went right down the field and scored with the fullback. So he takes a little bit of pressure off that running game and get to the second level. And he shows that he can catch the ball out of the backfield. So it will be a first and 10. We do believe that Mike Dunn is not available today. He was injured in the Harvard game last week. This looks like no gain on the play as uh, Ben Richard is there to make the tackle of Selwyn Simpson, who carries for the first time. No gain. You know, Ben Richard's an interesting story. He played at Downingtown West. And then his before his fresh or sophomore year, he transferred out to a, a Utah high school, really got no looks out there, came back home after his senior year, had nowhere to go. They called Bucknell. Joe Susan liked him. They offered him, and now he's their starting linebacker and one of the best in the league. Yeah, he's outstanding. Very, very good linebacker. I guess Brandon Bryant's probably the best, and he's right up there with maybe the best. Rocco Palumbo with a nice little straight arm as he puts the straight arm, and that kept the defender from getting down at his legs. He gets it to the 24-yard line. He'll pick up eight. Tackle is made by Joe Loro. Michael Palumbo, he's been the big-time receiver for Lafayette. The guy you go to, put it in, get it out, get it out to your receiver. And he's a big kid. I had a chance to stand next to him uh, two weeks ago on the sideline. He's much bigger than you'd think. Both him and, and, and uh, Mrazek are just huge. So to get to his legs, use that long arm, it picks up good yardage. Well, here's a tough call for Lafayette. It's yep. third and two. They usually have no success trying to run for this first down. So they will try to throw for it. And firing. That's a first down. Nice catch. Emil just outraced the defender. The defender stayed with him for about five yards. And then Emil was just quicker than he was. And he got himself open. Drew Newcomb is there to make the tackle. Well, you kind of get a feel for what Coach Garrett's trying to do is move the pocket a little bit. He did it on first down here. He did it on third down. Good patience that replay time. Replay is operational again. Good, good job. So we got replay back. That's a good sign. Don't need it right there. But that's a really nice job by O'Malley. Staying patient. Waiting for O'Meal, uses speed, get to the edge. Lafayette, a couple first downs here in the first quarter. Just got to get that big play. From the 30-yard line. Here's a quick toss. As out and trying to make the cut, Selwyn Simpson. He can't get much, just back to the line of scrimmage again. Marine is there to make that tackle. Brian Marine. As we mentioned, a preseason All-American. He, he returns <laughs> kicks, and he's done just about He's blocked the uh, punt. He's got an interception. He's got a forced fumble. He does a lot. Yeah, and that one, I think, uh, on the outside there, Barkley, the right tackle, should have went out and got the corner and allowed the center, Donnelly, to clean up. But they both took the linebacker and really nobody to block Marine. So it's second and 10 after no game. Mirazic in motion. He'll flip-flop over to the left side. Back to throw, firing. That ball is caught. Now trying to make something happen. Not able to do much with it, however, after uh, Dylan Wadsworth makes the grab at the 35. A gain of five. Tackle again made by Mark Piles. He's been involved in a number of them. Yeah, Lafayette's kind of making a living inside the hashes right here. So Dylan Wadsworth just goes down. Nice, easy pickup. Five, ten yards. You see the eyes of O'Malley go right to him. Sometimes that's a detriment. You've got to be able to look people off. What a good pick up there. You get up a little bit more of a manageable third down. Again, Alec Morazic's got to be a guy you can find in these situations with his height and his ability to catch the football. They have not used him very much all season long. He has just 23 catches. 71 catches last year. Firing and coming back to the ball was Palumbo, and he was open. And the pass was just thrown. I don't know if Rocco made the wrong cut or O'Malley just did not throw the ball properly, but it's an incomplete pass. And actually on the backside, a play they run all the time, C.J. Emil ran that arrow route. He's open in the middle of the field, and then you see the ball actually looked like O'Malley thought that Palumbo was going to work more to the outside. He kind of st stopped and just kind of checked the route up. And O'Malley again, that's not setting his feet. Got to set your feet and throw the football. He got a lot of, of feet movement there. Beautiful punt by Turk. And the ball's bobbled on the ground, but it is fallen upon by Alan Butler immediately. There is a penalty flag. I don't. I think he waved for a fair catch. So this could be interference 
on the fair catch opportunity to catch the ball and uh, we believe that running into him was Phil Parham. Yeah, but we'll like get the call. It was a tough call because it looked like Parham kind of may have touched him prior to the ball getting there and then the ball was bobbled after he caught it so I'm not sure if they can wave this off or not but. Kick catch interference on a kicking team number 22 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down. So it is as we described. Yeah and watch the ball it just hangs up in the air so long right there. So Butler gets underneath it. And the fact that he dropped the ball is probably why they called the interference. So even if Lafayette would have got on that that's a tough call. You know, There's no halo anymore. There's no room. You just have to allow the punt returner when he puts his hand up to catch the football and give him room. And you saw Phil Parham there trying to avoid it. But that's a 15 yard penalty is a lot. It's something they may have to look at. But I think it's more of a safety I issue. I agree. It's trying to protect that guy from getting yep. uh, run over. Chad Freshnock is in the backfield with his quarterback. John Charlanzio, Charlanzio two for three for 36 yards. The only score in the game, if you just tuned in, Bucknell intercepted a pass on Lafayette's first possession. Dan Newcomb ran it back 33 yards for the touchdown. That's where we stand. Bucknell's second offensive possession. Keeping it, Charlanzio, he's back. He wants to go deep. Instead, he'll fire the ball just a little bit too far, as that one was intended for Kyle Kinner, who has 13 catches. He was open. But the pass was not on the mark. And Kinner had come from the far side of the field. So the play action pass has given Charlanzio a lot of time, but not as accurate as he wants to be. Watch him just kind of cross your field right here. You're going to see Horan clear it out. And then the depth. So Trent crossen has got to do a better job up there recognizing play action, getting out. And when he gets out, he's got to look across the field for somebody coming across. He was just deep enough to cause that high throw. 45 seconds to go, first period. Second and 10 from the 39. We're a quick screen again. Here's that quick toss out here. Good blocking and pretty good pursuit that time by Lafayette. Butler makes the catch, getting out there very quickly to make the tackle was Yazir Thomas. You kind of see Charlanzio look to his left pre-snap. So when Lafayette bailed out and the corner backed off that time to the field, okay, they basically gave some action. You know, he basically said, I'm going to throw it out there because you're going to play soft. I'm going to give it right now. One guy I don't recognize on the field right now is Eric Mitchell, 24. You know, we see a, a couple of different guys in there. Clay Rush now at the field side corner. Big play here, third and three. Take the handoff back, drop it off. It's almost intercepted. As it looked like stepping in front might be Jerry Poe as uh, the ball was tipped by Lafayette's Bo Bosch. Yeah, Bo Bosch did a nice job just keeping his contain, not trying to make the sack, but getting in there and using that six foot five body. Watch Bosch off the right side. Lafayette brings pressure. Bosch just gets in the face. Oh, what a great play there. And almost, tell you what, that ball hangs in the air a hair longer, and you're going to see the big man, that Jerry Poe, pick that off and go the other way. If it's not tipped, I think it yeah. might have been intercepted. Maybe. Chenoweth is back to receive the punt of Peachin. Chenoweth will call for a fair catch. Another good high punt by Peachin back at the 11-yard line. So that's a 44-yard punt. We're going to call a timeout because the, the first period is in the book. Stay with us. Welcome back. Lafayette with the football again deep in their own territory at the 11-yard line after another good punt by Alex Peachin. Ball is dropped, quickly thrown out here to Matt Morazic. And Matt can't quite turn it upfield, but we can send it down to the field. Here's John Leone. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Quick injury report. Number 24, Eric Mitchell is down with a shoulder, but he should be back. So that's the good news. We also talked about John Garrett talking about different ways to move the football. Michael, how about the creativity? You hand the ball to Dylan Wadsworth, <laughs> you throw it to the fullback, and, uh, you know, you, you did just lots of different ways to move the football. Yes. Very good, John, exactly. And he's found a couple different ways. They just need to have that one splash play. So far, they've had a little bit of trouble. And usually when they go tights into the boundary here, they like to run the ball into the boundary. Second and eight. Hand the ball off. Here comes Chenoweth. Or check a Palumbo. Palumbo stays in bounds. No, the official's going to say he stepped out right along that line. It looked very, very close. It'll be a gain of six. And Lafayette will be looking at a third and two. Well, this is a play they ran a couple times here uh, to Palumbo. They love it. It's speed sweep. He gets that full head of steam coming around the corner. Let's see if he steps out of bounds right. Not out there. And then prop right there. He stepped out of bounds. And he actually 
Yep, they got that spot almost perfect, right on the 19-yard line. But Lafayette's been bringing up, uh, Gary, a bunch of good third downs here. Third down and one, third down and two. Got to convert on these plays. Don't make it too hard on your quarterback. Execute the third downs. Not too much movement. Find out who you want to throw the ball to, get a good pre-snap read. Big play here on a two-yard need as they will get the two. Hitting that hole quickly, C.J. Emil, and that again was maybe a toe away from big yardage. Yeah, beautiful play again. Some of the plays we haven't seen. This is just quick toss to the outside. You set a meal to the field. You get a big offensive lineman or two out in front of him. So a bunch of different ways. Good job right there. You see out in front, Jake Marotti. Nice job by Jake there. But the pursuit got to him. But you said, Gary, right there, one step away. You just feel like Emil. Yeah. He is just caged. He wants to get out of there. But a good pickup for Lafayette in that first down. So it is first, then 10. They've gotten the ball so deep in their own territory, even if they pick up one, two, three first downs, they still only get the midfield with that. Back to throw. Looking. O'Malley will fire. Got rid of it just in the last second before he was going to be hit. C.J. Emil with the catch. As they'll mark it at the 26, a gain of just a yard. Tackle is made by Ben Richard. Now you see the pressure coming inside. Just on that left side again, Marathi one on one. And this defensive line, we talked about it for Bucknell, and that's uh, Simeon Page again. He's been a guy that's come forward this last couple of games. He's been playing great football, and that time a good move to get back inside the tackle and put the pressure on O'Malley. Second and nine. Chenoweth faked the ball to Chenoweth. Now they got to get rid of it. As coming in and coming in very quickly with Simeon Page. He was right in the face of O'Malley. So Sean got rid of it very quickly. No one there to make the catch. One thing I've noticed about the Bucknell defense is they're playing everybody up on the line of scrimmage store, engaging linemen right away. So that tells me is you've got to be able to throw the ball down the middle. There's nobody in the between the hash marks. So put it in, pull it out, get a vertical route going forward. You may get those linebackers to come off, but most of the time right now, the Bucknell line, the uh, linebackers are right up on the line of scrimmage, showing pressure. Here they're going to play some zone because it's third down and nine. Now they're up again. See that? You can get a guy vertical on these guys. Quick out here. They get the ball to Emil. And he does a nice job of getting the first down. He gets that second effort push after a great cut back to the inside. And that will be just exactly what they needed, nine yards. Yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about. Get the ball to your backs out in space. So they're getting away from this rush, getting away from the front seven. Nice block on the outside by your senior there, Matt Morazic. So an unexpected first down. Lafayette pretty darn good on third down so far. But as much as they crowd the line of scrimmage, Buck now, Emil now with six catches already here early in the second quarter. Lafayette's already had eight third downs in this game. They've converted five of them. Back to throw. He's got to get rid of it and does not. Sean O'Malley will go down. He will get sacked on the play. And that's going to be a big loss back inside the 25 coming in to get that sack was uh, Jimmy Sheehan as the loss is going to be a loss of 13. You can see kind of again Bucknell just crowding the line of scrimmage and putting the pressure on these young offensive linemen. And you see right there a breakdown on the left side. Hampton the left guard and on the outside right there the Jake Marotti. Drake Marotti allows him to escape to the inside. You think maybe they were turning that protection back. So Hampton the freshman's got to work out to his B gap. He didn't do that and allowed Sheehan to get through for the uh, sack. So second and very long, 23 yards to go. Mike always likes to get about half. So can they pick up a dozen? They've got to get rid of the ball. C.J. Emil was sitting in there in the middle. He had camped and he was wide open, but Sean O'Malley never saw him. In a tough situation when you're second down in a mile. And now Lafayette in a situation where you really just want to get the ball, kind of change field position. So you pick up 12 or 15 yards here, even though you don't pick up the first down, at least you get to punt the ball and change field position. So you got to be careful with the football here. The first two downs, they decided to throw the football twice, and both of them were down the field type of plays. So uh, both come up empty. Now you just don't want don't want to make a mistake here on a third and 23. Do they like the wheel route with Joey Chen with out of the backfield here. It should be encroachment, I believe. Well, they're going to say Lafayette moves. That's what Bucknell was saying. I don't know. I think they're going to call it on Bucknell. Maybe. I thought it was on Bucknell. Yeah, I think you're right, Gary. <laughs> Offside, defense, number 89. Five-yard penalty, third down. Bucknell is the least penalized team in the Patriot League, and that is their first penalty 
of the game. They come in as number one defensively in points scored, number one in total yardage in the Patriot League defended, number one in pass defense, and number two in rushing defense. So they've had pretty themselves good. a pretty good <laughs> defensive season so far. First down, and also uh, opponents' third down conversions, they're only giving up 29.1%, which is number one. Lafayette defensively giving up 47%, which is last in the league. So see how they crowding the line of scrimmage. I think you can slip somebody vertically between the hash marks, and it's a direct route to the football. You don't have to throw the ball out to the sideline. Sometimes Dylan Wadsworth is available here over the middle, and O'Malley gets out of some trouble, but he can't find a shirt with the Lafayette Maroon, and therefore gets run out of bounds on the play. And Lafayette will have to punt the ball away, but they started the drive on the 11. They got it out to the 27-yard line, so there's no gain on that run. And we'll see what Michael Turk can do here. Last week, Lafayette punt team did not do a good co job covering it. We saw Shelton Mosley for Harvard take a punt back about 80, 90 yards for a touchdown. So first punt they covered very well. They're going to do the same thing right here. Yeah, special teams gave up a kickoff return for a touchdown and a punt return for a touchdown last week against Harvard. Calling for the fair catch at the 35, Alan Butler. And it'll be the Bison with the football when we come back. There's our drone shot. There's the score, seven nothing. Lehigh Valley drone, they're the ones that uh, give us that shot. We appreciate that. Uh, just go to their website. I think it's lehighvalleydrone.com. And uh, you'll find out how you too can use those awesome shots. Oh, are they amazing, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Of course they are. And First and 10 now for Bucknell. The offense, they've only run 11 plays so far in this game, and we're at the 10.30 mark of the second quarter. They lead the league also in time of possession, but today Lafayette has owned the time of possession, and Bucknell uh, a good team when leading. Turn around, hand the ball to Freshnock. Man, he's not going anywhere. He got nailed right at the line of scrimmage. He's coming up to make that hit is Matt Rothrock. Matt came in with 18 tackles, now 19. Injured last year with a foot injury. Matt a senior, 6'2", 280, no gain on the play. Yeah, nice job. Watch Matt just kind of lock out the, the offensive guard here and then gets off the block right there. Nice job by Matt. He's strong up front. This defensive line for Lafayette, I expect them to play well. They go to a three-man line right here with a 3-4 look. So we'll see if they drop into coverage, and they like to get the ball out quickly. Lafayette looks like they're coming. They give it to Freshnock again, and uh, he gets hit immediately by Yazir Thomas after crossing the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up four, and here's another big third and six. And Lafayette gets some of their pass rushers in. You see Keith Earl come in the game. Demetrius Breedlove, they've moved him from an inside position to an outside position. So we'll get a quick look here. And also Ryan Barnett, 97. He's going to line up at the top of your screen. He's been a guy that could really run the hump and turn the corner. So we'll see if Lafayette brings a little bit of pressure here with Brandon Bryant and Michael Root. And it looks like Brandon's coming. Third and six. Bryant is coming. He gets double teamed. The ball is knocked out of the hands of Tolu. And Lafayette will come up with it, I believe. As it looked like Michael Root fell on the football and getting the hit was Ryan Barnett. And that's going to be a turnover, number 98 in there, Demetrius Breedlove in there to make that hit, and Lafayette gets the turnover. Now they brought pressure. They just brought more guys than Bucknell could handle, and it came through that front side A-gap. So watch the pressure right here. You see Breedlove, he's just going to beat the nose, and then bang, and I'm not sure if that's going to be a fumble. It looked like he was throwing that football. This might be a review right here. It looked like Charlonzio's arm was high, and it looked like the ball might be an incomplete pass, but if Lafayette wanted it, it's going to be a fumble. Well, John has a report while we await the decision. Yeah, well, if you guys get a chance to replay that again, watch number 33 on the defense. Yes, that's Brandon Bryant. Michael, count the attention that he draws. How many guys are blocking Brandon Bryant? So take a look at this. I mean, it was clear. Uh, he may not have made the play, but he made the play happen. So yeah, there you get a look at it, the decision. Review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Yeah. First down, Lafayette. Yeah, actually, and I'm looking at some of the coaches in the Lafayette booth. They're asking me, is that a fumble? It actually looked like he threw it, but it, almost what they call the empty hand. It slipped out of his hand at the top, and I think he just felt number 98's breath on him, and that ball came out quick. 
but the Charlanzio just loses the football, and you and I talked before the game. We're looking, as a Lafayette fan, a couple mistakes by the other quarterback, and that's a big one right there. See if Lafayette can capitalize. Well, let's see if they can equalize the interception thrown by O'Malley. Hand the ball off, and that's not going anywhere. As uh, getting it was Dylan Wadsworth. And Wadsworth is going to just get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain. So Lafayette trying to take advantage of this uh, turnover here. And you kind of figure for Cordenbrock, they're going to need probably 15 yards to get a field goal. But I would think Lafayette's got to play off of it. They've run it twice now to Wadsworth. Nothing there. Nice job, Simeon Page, staying home, taking on the big tight end. But I think Lafayette's going to have to use the center of the field here. Attack those two safeties downhill. Selwyn Simpson is in the backfield for Lafayette. Under center, Sean O'Malley. Back to throw. Looking for a quick pass. And he fires it nowhere into uh, a little bit of an abyss as uh, nobody was around that one as he was getting tackled. Coming in to make that tackle was Abdullah Anderson. Yeah, it just I'm not quite sure who that ball was headed for right there. But again, O'Malley, no time to set his feet as the defensive line is pushing the offensive lineman right back into the lap of Sean O'Malley. And uh, it looked like he wanted to get rid of it really quickly, but there was no receiver turned around looking for the ball. So it's going to end up being a waste of possession if Lafayette can't pick up some yardage here. I don't even think Horton Brock's in range until you get him down to maybe the 25-yard line. Well, that was Abdullah Anderson's uh, typical play for him. We said preseason All-American. Last week when he did not play against Cornell, that was after starting 38 consecutive games and throwing the ball away, and Lafayette will not move the ball at all. And again, that, that's a situation where Matt Morazic had come across on the drag. He's wide open over the middle of the field. What, watch Matt Morazic come into your screen wide open. Right there. Just never gets a chance to set his feet. And again, can you put it on O'Malley? Because everything's at his toes. But he's got to be able to stop, set his feet, and get rid of that football. I tell you, Morazic would have picked up the first down. I'm kind of riding Sean here, but he really has got some happy feet today, even though his offensive line is not helping him out. Well, Lafayette's going to count on their defense to put Bucknell deep in their own territory as Michael Turk is in to kick the ball to Allen Butler. And he'd love to do uh, exactly what Peachin did to Lafayette, put it on around the two-yard line. Is it going to stay out of the end zone? It is not. As it goes into the end zone by about five yards, it'll be a 33-yard punt. But they're only going to net 13 yards. We'll be back. noticed a good presentation can mean everything let the friendly experienced staff at nacy printing help you make that all important impression with sharp colorful offset or digital printing serving the lehigh valley and beyond for over 35 years we offer a one-stop shop for a wide variety of print services including complete design full color offset and digital printing with complete bindery and mailing services some of our most popular items are newsletters, brochures, cell sheets, booklets, pocket folders, labels, and much, much more. No matter what the size, each job is completed to meet your exact specifications, on budget and always on time. Our printed products are produced on state-of-the-art equipment using environmentally friendly, chemical-free production processes. We at Nacy Printing support our community as founding partners and official printer of the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Nacy Printing. We'll make your printing goals a vibrant reality. Coming up, of course, Farmers Insurance Halftime Report. Stats, highlights. John Leon will be talking to the president of the Maroon Club. You know, these two teams first played in 1883 mm -hmm. as uh, Bucknell lost to Lafayette 59 to nothing. But Bucknell has won four of the last six times these two teams have played, and they have played every year since 1945, 73 consecutive years of football. Only Lafayette Lehigh is a, a longer matchup than Lafayette Bucknell. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. 
for the Bison. Alonzo back, looking, looking, stepping up. He's going to step, fire. He's got his man. And that will not quite be a first down, I don't think. There is Brandon Bryant to make the tackle. Yeah, you can see the protection that Terlanzio is receiving and O'Malley is not, but a chance right there as uh, Michael Root comes out of coverage to take the quarterback and then just a nice easy dump off of Terlanzio keeps his eyes up. So again, allowing Terlanzio to step up in the pocket is allowing him to find some receivers down the middle of the field. That was Podbielski who made that grab. He was not open until it looked like Terlanzio was going to run with the football. Now he's going to, oh, it's fumbled. The ball's on the ground, and Lafayette thought maybe they could pick it up and run it, and they don't come up with it. They tried to pick it up and run his right. Bo Bosch, I think, thought he was going to be able to grab it and go, and he couldn't grab it. And I think that's a direct correlation to the fact that the offense is struggling. The defense is trying to score. Really, honestly, that's what I see. Watch this ball come out of Charlanzio's hands again. Right here, he's going to get stripped there by Lovadov. And then watch him just come here. Bo Bosch is trying to pick this up and score. And the reason Bo's doing that is because I'm telling you, the offense is struggling. The defense is thinking we got to score a touchdown. Because normally a senior Bo Bosch is going to fall on that football and give it back to the offense. But I think he's trying to scoop and score right there. You can't blame him. He's not going to like what he sees when they look at the film. He knows that was a fumble recovery. Back to throw. Charlonzo firing. No. And that's going to be an incomplete pass. That was intended for Haran Lafayette with good coverage. And that coverage came from Phil Parham, who has been outstanding this year. Five interceptions, 43 tackles coming in. And a good route by Haran to the inside. Charlonzo never takes his eyes off him. Again, Breedlove with good pressure. And like you said, Gary, nobody better in the Patriots League. He's the best corner in the Patriots League. He's really backed it up with five interceptions and 15 pass breakups right now for the senior. So another punt. The third, wow, wow. Look at Peachum putting this one all the way back to the 24-yard line. As Chenoweth makes the catch, picks up about four yards. But that is a... Uh, a pro punt? <laughs> 61 yards, 61-yard punt. Wow, that was an absolute bomb of a kick right there. And we talked about Bucknell. They lead the league in net yardage with 38, 45 yard average. That was well over the average, but drove Chenna with all the way back inside his 15 or should be 20 yard line. But he got it. He got back to about the 24. So Lafayette now with an offense that's been struggling. And like you said, Gary, maybe stay with the run a little bit more because they've shown some signs of maybe popping one offensively if they keep the ball on the ground. Well, instead of getting a fumble recovery deep into Bucknell territory, they will start deep in their own territory at the 24-yard line. And we're going to get a penalty against Lafayette. False start. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty. First down. Jake Marotti moved early. Second penalty against Lafayette for 20 yards. Uh, no excuse for that. You come off the sideline, your first play from scrimmage, and you don't know what the cadence is or the count. So that's inexcusable. That can't happen. Drives Lafayette back and... It's tough enough to pick up 10, let alone 15. C.J. Emile is in there. We have not seen Deshaun Brown today, and we're not quite sure why. We did not get any kind of injury report on Deshaun Brown. C.J. will get the ball, and he'll move the pile a bit. Looks like he'll get up to about the 21 or 22. I think they're going to mark it at the 22 and give him a gain of three. The whole middle of that defensive unit in on the tackle. Jake Taggart right there, the freshman tight end. He's coming back from what we call a wham block. So he's going to go in motion back and forth and come back and kind of do a trap block on one of the D tackles, whether it's the nose or the three technique, trying to spring CJ up the middle. Lafayette in that diamond backfield right now. You see sometimes from the Packers. Second and 12, O'Malley back. Looking, wants to throw a screen, and that was totally defended. He wanted to throw a screen out here uh, to number 87, Jake Taggart. And Taggart was picked up immediately. No chance to get in the ball. So O'Malley had to get rid of it. Yeah. Nothing really there, obviously, like you said, Gary. Well sniffed out by the Bucknell defense. And we're kind of seeing why this Bucknell defense is so good. I mean, they diagnose plays very quickly. They tackle well. They crowd the line of scrimmage. And they force your offense into mistakes. And so far, really no room for the receivers to get open. Nobody's separating from anyone. And the pressure has been on the quarterback, really at his feet. They're allowing making him to move off his spot. This is the 35th play by Lafayette. 
Bucknell has run just 15 plays. I'm going to talk about good defense, the Lafayette defense. Oh, there again, another one of those tackles just getting the shoelace. Otherwise, that's another big gain. They're going to be short of a first down by a yard. Yeah, one yard, and, and, and great block by Wadsworth on the outside. And, and uh, Palumbo did a great job trying to get back inside. So watch Palumbo set this up. The quick throws are what is O'Malley's bread and butter. So watch Wadsworth stay on his feet. And then just, he just gets enough. I think that's Marine. It was. Yeah, just getting the shoelace of them. And Lafayette, deep in their own territory here, fourth down and one. Just five minutes left here in the half. I think maybe you go with a hard count right here. You have three timeouts, too. So maybe go hard count, and then if you don't get them on the hard count, you try to uh, call a timeout and then get the first down. We're going to get a timeout. Timeout. Lafayette. By Lafayette, and I think that's all, everything you just said. 30-second timeout. <laughs> they wanted to get up to the line of scrimmage quickly, see if they could get Bucknell to move. And then they decide to call a timeout. And we'll be wrong about everything if they still decide to go for it here. <laughs> well, I see the punt team huddling around the 35-yard line. The times you do that, Gary, is when you're on your side of the uh, – and, and the hash mark's so close so you can do that. Let's we'll take a look maybe at Rocco Palumbo. Yeah, he had a uh, pretty terrific football game this season. Rocco has been – Outstanding. Let's take a look at some of his achievements. Yeah, against Fordham. Great job right there on the quick screen. Good blocking again by the senior Wadsworth. And then the biggest play of the game here late in the fourth quarter. Lafayette springs him down the sideline. And probably O'Malley's best pass of the year. Just on a shoot. Just hit him with a dime for the touchdown. And the win, 14-10 for Lafayette. Well, here is a very interesting call from the 33-yard line. Fourth and a yard. And Lafayette moves along the All line start. of scrimmage. Offense, number 75. Five and that's yard penalty, Jake Marotti. Fourth down. Oh, my. Yeah, oh, my is right. You said it, Gary. On fourth down conversions, Lafayette is last in the league. Six out of 15. And now they're going to be obviously not going to run this play. But that's two false starts on Marotti. And it actually, it happened because the defensive end, Andrew uh, Matabielski, he moved early. And it caused Marotti to kind of fidget right there. And... We'll never know if they were really going to run a play there. We'll never know. As you see Coach Sam as he's talking to Jake Marotti. Ten yards on Jake Marotti in that series alone cost Lafayette the first down. Turk. Oh, he gets off a beauty. So Turk is going to drive Bucknell deep. No chance at all for Butler to collect it. And this is going to be a punt all the way back to the 11-yard line. The punters have come as advertised. Gary Poe will down it at the 11. That is a 62-yard punt. Wow, it's a punting clinic right now, back and forth. Just a beautiful job by him. Exactly what Lafayette needed to change the field position right here. As you see Eric Mitchell, I think Eric Mitchell's going to get back in the game for the Lafayette defense. And I look right now for Lafayette to bring a little pressure early in this series of downs to maybe get Charlanzio, who's made a couple mistakes so far here in the first half. He's turned it over once, should have turned it over a second time. But you cannot allow them to get out of here because, remember, they get the ball coming out of halftime. So this is that double uh, possession that I always talk about. It's been a punting clinic. It hasn't been an offensive clinic. Bucknell with 52 total yards of offense, none on the ground. Well, they'll get maybe a yard here as uh, there is Brandon Bryant coming up to make the tackle. And uh, Lafayette with 80 yards passing, 9 yards on the ground for a total obviously of 89 yards gain of a yard yeah good job good tackling by both teams watch brandon just kind of read this right there he's going to step across good job by root taking on the block allows brandon free to the football carrying that football was marcus carter for that one yard so it's second and nine they're going to play some zone they're going to bring some pressure right there no snap and there was a big hole opened up and Lafayette will run the big running back out of bounds. Carter, big kid, six foot, 210 pounds. He's only a freshman, came in with just seven yards rushing. Lafayette in on that tackle was uh, Trent Crossan, and he got some help from Eric Mitchell, who's back in the lineup. Yeah, very good job on that left side. P.J. Barr and Chase Watkins, they block down, down. Lafayette's running a blitz. They're bringing the double A gap blitz, and the linebacker didn't get around. So that opened up that B gap and allowed them to kick out the defensive end. That's the first Bucknell first down since their first offensive possession of the game. Oh, Bucknell, ooh. There was a hit as that hit came from Brandon Bryant. Carrying is Carter. And the freshman uh, took a real shot. Also in there was Trent Crossan. Gain of a couple. Look at how quick Brandon Bryant. 
wow, I got to see that again. He actually jumped across the line of scrimmage into that front side A gap and then redirected. So we know that knee's feeling pretty darn good here late in the season. Talked about it at the luncheon this week about how it, it took him a game or two, he admitted, to feel confidence in that leg. Oh, that pass was high. And that one had interception potential too, <laughs> as that was uh, intended for 87, Andrew Podbielski. Wow, that ball hangs up another half a second. You see, we get a good look at Phil Parham, the leading interceptor in the league and also ranked in the top five or 10 in the country at five interceptions in six games, so uh, seven games. Lafayette, a big down right here. They could get the football back with two timeouts, but their defense has got to make a play right here, see if they can get to the quarterback. It's third and nine. They have to get to the 34-yard line. Rolling. Charlonzo looking, firing, and I don't know. He nope. will not give him the first down as even though he had to dive, they're going to, no, they're going to say he didn't catch it at all. Yeah, I think what he was doing was bobbling the ball as he was going out of bounds, Gary. So the, the, on the field is an incomplete pass. Yeah, the Push sideline out. judge. Watch the back judge. He's going to come running in. So I'm wondering if he never had possession. Yeah, you wonder. Yeah, I don't know. You know what here, there, I think what they're saying is that when he got out of bounds, the ball came loose. Almost like in the NFL where you've got to continue with the ball to the ground. So one foot down goes, reaches. They called it incomplete. And I don't think Joe Susan's going to challenge it. Because it was, if it wasn't going to be a first down, I think you'd see Joe Kalinjic. Watch. He's got the ball, definitely. He's got one foot down, two feet down. He's out of bounds right there. So one foot down. But then he reaches and watch the ball just move as it hits the ground. My question is, yep. do they call him out of bounds with that foot there? At that point, it was a catch. Timeout. Yeah. Bucknell. And I'm wondering if they're going to take a look at this. 30-second timeout. And if they are going to take a look at it, it's really going to be fourth down and one. Yeah, they'll and then punt Joe it Susan. anyway, but he does pick up yeah. the, that extra yardage for their punter, Peachin. Or does Joe Susan have the option here, the possibility of Joe Susan going for a fourth down and one? I think they're going to review it, and then uh, Joe might even challenge this to say, you know what, he had possession. Give me the fourth and one and let me make a decision. The Lafayette Sports Network has provided unparalleled coverage of Leopard Athletics for 21 years. Fans can purchase DVDs of all telecasts for the past few seasons, as well as a few memorable telecasts from years gone by. So watch that great game whenever you want. Shop the GoLeopards.com DVD store today. Bye week next week for Lafayette, and then uh, follow that up with a game at Georgetown, which we cannot get the rights to. Take a look right here. You're going to see... Kyle Kinner. Watch if he hits the ground here. The ball comes loose. And I think that's what they're saying, that he didn't have possession as he was going out of bounds. An ugly looking snap right there. And a flag down. That's a high punt. Chenoweth will call for the fair catch. Grab it at the 30-yard line. There's a flag back at the 19-yard line. I think it might have been like an illegal formation, possibly. Not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. They might add it to the run or to the fair catch. And now they will. It is definitely against Bucknell. I might make him kick it again. Now he's going to take the five-yard shot. Illegal formation. Offense. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the punt. First down. Okay, three minutes left for Sean O'Malley. You know, these are the times where we've seen Sean at his best, I think. The two-minute, the up-tempo, the I don't have to worry about where I'm throwing the ball or who I'm throwing it to. I'm just going to find a spot, and right. I'm going to get rid of it. That was a 45-yard punt by Peachin. The five-yard penalty will put the ball on the 35-yard line. And Lafayette has three minutes to work with, and they have two of their timeouts left. As neither offense has been able to do much of anything, Lafayette certainly has had the ball a lot more often than Bucknell. 35 plays to 20. Looking again for somebody down the seam because the active linebackers like Piles and Richard, they're going to want to make plays at the line of scrimmage. Taggart is going to leave the backfield, throw it out here, and what's a nice catch. That's a one-handed grab, and they're going to lose a yard. I mean, the pressure that's coming on O'Malley up the middle is just every single play right now. He doesn't even have time to set his feet. Watch him. There's just too much pressure in his face, and he's really throwing this ball away. And you see Taggart right there gives you a little OBJ in the flat for a one-yard loss. <laughs> that was a big Paul just hanging, yeah. grabbing that football. You can kind of look and see he's had success on the quick screens. He's had some success just kind of getting the ball to the flat, but really no success when he has to drop back the pass. The offensive line really struggling. 
just not giving him much time at all to look over the field. So they'll try to run it. And this time there is a nice hole for Selwyn Simpson. I get a gut feeling they can run the ball today and they get it up to the 49 yard line. Welcome back, Gary and Mike up in the booth as it's time for the first half highlights. They're presented by RCN, life redefining cable, phone, and internet. Here's Mike. Well, there weren't a ton of highlights, but in that first half, uh, both defenses were outstanding. This play obviously stands out. This is the late throw to the outside, and that's going to be intercepted by Drew Newcomb. He returns at 31 yards for the touchdown. Third play of the game, as you get a look here, just late into the outside. Great break by the senior safety to take that one in for the touchdown. He avoids O'Malley on his way in. The 7-0 lead. And you can see a lot of pressure here at O'Malley's feet. Watch the play-action pass where you think you're going to buy some extra time. Jimmy Sheehan comes in that time. He gets to the feet, and then nobody blocks Simeon Page. A, a guy, you got to put a hat on a hat. And, uh, again, another pressure by Hage. Probably could have been called a little roughing right there, but he has been in the backfield. Lafayette's had their own pressure. Watch Demetrius Breedlove. He causes the fumble, comes out of the hand of Charlanzio. The Lafayette Leopards get on it. They can't do anything with the football. And then some more pressure here. Love it up. And you see there, Bobosh trying to pick it up and scoop and score. Can't blame him for that. But as you take a look at the halftime highlights, they're not going to show much more than the highlights in person. The halftime stats, as you are looking at them, brought to you by Nancy Printing, handling Lafayette's printing needs. There's only one number up there that has really meant anything to this ball game, and that's Lafayette throwing an interception that led to a touchdown. Otherwise, Mike, this has been absolutely uh, tough, tough defense on both sides. Yeah, the one thing I notice is O'Malley, obviously uh, not a very good half for him, four for 10. But four of the er, of the six incompletions that he's thrown have been throwaways, ball where he just has no chance to get the ball to any receivers. I look at the punting game. One thing that does stand out to me is the time of possession. Lafayette had the ball for 40 plays. Bucknell only 22, and Lafayette had the ball for uh, 20 minutes in that first half. Doubled up uh, Bucknell. They need to continue to do that because Bucknell is the number one team in the Patriot League in time of possession. Lafayette's last in time of possession. So there's something I think Lafayette's got to hang on to. And right now it starts with a kickoff and coverage here. Gordon Brock has not really gotten the ball to the end zone. We've seen some good returns against the Leopards' uh, kickoff coverage team. Leading rusher in the ball game for Lafayette. Ironically, it's Rocco Palumbo. Three rushes for 20 yards. Palumbo is also tied for the lead in receptions. 22 yards with three receptions. Fresh knock, 22 yards rushing for Bucknell. But here we go with the second half as the kickoff is right at about the one-inch line and bringing the ball out and taking a pretty good lick that time as Brian Marine, or I believe that was Brian Marine, covering and returning the ball. And making the tackle for Lafayette and a good hard tackle was Jack Lamb. And it will be Bucknell ball at the 20-yard line. So Bucknell gains nothing by taking the ball out and returning it. Here's John. Gary, Michael, quick injury update. We mentioned Nick Pearson pregame that he was dressed, appeared to be ready to go, but he was just cleared for contact midweek. Matt Bailey told me probably better to hold him out maybe one more week. We probably won't see him. Well, that's not good news, uh, but it is good news that Nick's going to come back before the season comes to a close. He'll have a bye week to get even healthier. There's a nice hole opened up as uh, they'll get a good first down yardage as running is Chad Freshnock, and he is tackled by Brandon Bryant at the 26, a gain of six. Now the Bucknell offensive line got a little separation that time. They forced Lafayette's defensive line to really get on their horse and run. Downhill stretch play outside. Good job by Freshnock. Put his foot in the ground and cut back against an open gap. Second and four. Bucknell with just four first downs in that first half. Fresh knock again. And I think, uh, Mike, you talked about coming out and just doing what you do best, but there's a penalty flag down, and that's in the area of, of holding or maybe an illegal block in the back as we'll await the call by Henry Wimberg. That was a first down run. Holding. Offense, number 79. Your penalty, second down. Yeah, you said it, Gary. It's just tough to hold those blocks for a long time. Remember, your running back's kind of running on a track as you get a look at Joe Susan. He's not happy about that. But Bucknell going in and coming out of the locker room, they have to say, listen, we have to get back to what we do. We're a play-action team. You can't play-act if you don't run the ball. So you have to get number one first, A, run the ball, and then obviously we can open some things up off the play-action pass. They've been good on play-action, but their drop-back pass has really uh, allowed too much rush by the Lafayette front seven. So similar on the other side. Lafayette has to run the ball. So 
you can see them. No, no surprise they've come out and run the ball twice here with their big running back. They haven't done a great deal against the Lafayette secondary. Four for ten for 52 yards. In the first half, they're looking at a second. As the ball is back at the 16-yard line, they're going to run it anyway. And again, it's Breshnock carrying it up to the 20 before he is tackled by Yazir Thomas. And Poe also in there on that hit. Third and 10. Third down 10 is really where Lafayette's defense has lived against these Patriot League teams. We saw him do it against Peter Puyos. We saw him do it against uh, Anderson for, uh, for Fordham. Uh, but this is a chance for Lafayette again to bring a little pressure and rely on some of the corners and some of the good coverage guys they have in the secondary. And the roll. Charlanzio looking, firing, caught, but that will not be even close to a first down. So Lafayette holds on that first possession. That pass was completed to number 80, Andrew Owers. Make it Owers, and he got tackled immediately by Tamir Jones. Good opportunity here. Great job. You know, as a defense for Lafayette, you come out, you want to say, listen, we're going to get a stop. And we're going to get some field position. So see if Joey Chenna with here. Lafayette punt return-wise have not been very good this year. They haven't had any turnovers, but they really haven't had much yardage in their return. See if Joey can get one here. Another big high punt. That's going to go out of bounds. So Joey had a lot of running room up the sideline, but he was out of bounds. There was nobody over there to make the tackle. They're going to mark it at the 40 or 41. Got a timeout down in the field. The Leopards will have the ball, but they also own a seven-point deficit. Stay with us. And hopefully we'll come back at the top of the Patriot League. But first, got to overcome this tough Bucknell defense. Good field position on the 40-yard line. First and 10 Lafayette. O'Malley in the backfield by himself. He needs some protection. And well, they must have heard me. <laughs> well, they're crowding the line of scrimmage. Five against five up front. Want to get back into that diamond formation. Again, uh, we have not seen Deshaun Brown. I don't know if John can get a report for us down there on the field. That's Selwyn Simpson. And Selwyn uh, has a nice little hole and picks up four or five yards. I think they're going to give him four and a half. So we'll see what they technically give him. Should be five. As coming up to make the hit was Ben Richard. Yeah, Selwyn coming out of the game now. But again, just a lot of guys in there. You get a hat on a hat. Good job again by Wadsworth. Got to stay on that block a little bit longer. But Selwyn Simpson's a big kid. He's going to have a bright future here on the hill. Back into that mold of like a Leonard Moore or a, or a, or a Maurice White. You know, those big running backs Lafayette used to have. Now it's C.J. Emile back there with O'Malley. He had six catches in that first quarter alone. O'Meal, that time. Oh, it looked like he was going to have some running room, and boy, did that close quickly. Coming up with a great tackle was Joe Lauro. Watch Lauro come in here. That's why he's an all-league player. Watch. It's just when CJ gets a little bit of the draw. That's that what I was talking about on inside the huddle. You bring guys upfield. You invite them upfield. You create running lanes, but Lauro coming downhill from his safety position to make a big time hit on CJ when you thought he had a little bit more room there. Big down right here. Lafayette's got to keep possession and stay on the field here on this third down. Matt Morazic one on one down here again at the bottom. Lafayette five for 12 so far on third down efficiency. Low snap, that was all messed up and stepping out of a tackle, watch out, 40, 35. Oh, what a nice run by CJ Emile. He was trapped in his own backfield and somehow got out of that backfield. Run out of bounds by Brian Marine. The run of the day for the Lafayette Leopards. Takes the ball down to the 29-yard line, a pickup of 24 yards. Well, if you watch C.J. Emil here on the hill, you just know that he's a step away every time. Watch right there. Jake Moratti gets beat to the inside by Amir Anderson, Abdullah Anderson, who's the best defensive lineman in the league. But Anderson just overruns him, and then you see the quickness of Emil. Good block downfield. Lafayette with a big pickup on third down when he really kind of making something out of nothing. That first down came all on the ground. I have not said that very often this season. They now have 59 yards rushing with the football. O'Malley under center. They're going to give it again. C.J. Emile to the outside, cuts up inside. And C.J. again, if not for a terrific open field tackle, he had plenty of running room going his way as that tackle is made by Bucknell's Brandon Benson. Yeah, again, one-on-one -on -one tackle. And, I, you know, I talked about it. When I went through the tackling of these two teams, the top 27 tacklers, as you see Emil right here, good job by Hampton right there, kind of turning back. The top 27 tacklers in the league, 
11 of them are on these two teams, and you can see it. It stands out. That's why you have two terrific defenses going at it today. Second and seven. Dylan Wadsworth readjusts. O'Malley hands the ball off. Another good hole. This time it's Selwyn slips in, and Selwyn will dive down inside the 10-yard line as he's tackled once again by Brian Marine, but not before. He'll get to the seven-yard line, a pickup of 19 yards. Well, he's the guy right now. Him and C.J. Emil kind of thunder and lightning. Just a great move by him. He's into the secondary, and Lafayette, all they're doing is putting a hat on a hat. Even though they get pressure up the field right there, they get separation and they create some levels, and that allows a guy like Simpson, who's got speed and size, to get that inside the 10-yard line. First and goal to go from the seven. This has been Lafayette's M.O. in their wins. Keep teams from scoring and getting touchdowns later in the ball game. Selwyn Simpson with a good hard run before running into Joe Loro. And they'll mark him at the five. Looked like he had more yardage than that. They'll give him a gain of two. Watch Selwyn put his left foot in the ground. Yeah, don't come out of the game, Selwyn. He's looking to the sideline. You're not out. He puts his foot in the ground, cuts that ball back. Thought he had a little bit of a seam. Now, if you're going to run play action, you want to run it on first down. Now, Lafayette, second down and five. they got to find a way here. This used to be Matt Morazic time. This used to be time to throw it up and let the big 6'4 guy go after it. He's got a tight split here at the bottom. A lot of room to work with if he wants Morazic on the fade. Well, Rocco's in motion, which means he might be able to hide a little bit in the secondary. It's a quick throw to Palumbo. Cuts up inside. Palumbo will get down to the two yard line it looked like he might be able to get in but a touchdown saving tackle by drew newcomb as a gain of three well, all you do is go back three games to see how lafayette scored inside the five yard line and uh, they like that quick screen as palumbo almost broke it lafayette bringing in a little bit more beef right now they take palumbo and marazic out of the game they're going to go with a three tight end fullback set this would be a great time to pull it put it in and pull it out. So three tight ends for Lafayette and Will Eisler, the fullback. Gonna be tough to run it in from the two. Watch for play action. And the ball off. Simpson, can he get to the outside? He's got the corner, and that's a touchdown for Selwyn Simpson, his first touchdown of the year. Lafayette's first rushing touchdown of the year, and they did that almost all on the ground. Seven running plays to just one pass play. Yeah, beautiful. Both teams coming out of the locker room and saying we got to run the football. Will Eisler just gets a piece of the down linebacker and a mistake by the defense there for Bucknell. Too much pressure inside, kind of slanting down, and a good job by the freshman seeing that and using his speed and size to get to the edge. The all-important extra point is up by Jeffrey Gordon Brock. It is good. We are knotted at seven. We'll recap the drive when we come back. We are back. It is 7-7. That drive 60 yards in eight plays. It took four minutes and 50 seconds. Here's John. Gary heard you and Michael talking about Deshaun Brown and his absence. You know, I had a chance to talk to Matt Bailey, the trainer. It's kind of a, a coach's decision, but he also tweaked his shoulder. They're going to hold him out. They wanted to give C.J. Emile a look and, of course, Selwyn Simpson. And I'll tell you what, uh, amazing response by C.J. and Selwyn. Uh, that was a sight for sore eyes if you're a Lafayette football fan. Back to you guys. It is Lafayette kicking the ball off. Omar Garcia is back there with Stefan Moore Green. He is the more dangerous of the two, is Stefan. Well, averaging almost 25 to yards a return. Sorry, guys. They have to continue to cover. Remember, they had a kickoff return for them last week against Harvard. Gordon Brock kicks it off, and it will be collected at the 10-yard line. And that is Moore Green, and he's going to get swarmed under. The first one to get there for Lafayette is Jack Lamb. So Lamb with a couple of good special teams plays. The ball ends up right where I guess it should be, the 20-yard line. And... That's where Bucknell had their first drive you know, of Lamb, this half. Lamb's turned out to be a fantastic special teams kid. 6'1", 220. You see how well he runs. Just a sophomore out of Doylestown. I think his parents were Steelers fans. Oh, I think that's where the name came from. <laughs> Jack, Jack Lamb. Lamb. 
Uh, just unbelievable. That's uh, that's a great play by him. Getting down the field. He made the play on the other kickoff. See if Lafayette's defense can continue to crowd the line of scrimmage and make plays on first down and get this Bucknell offense off schedule. And the ball off. Doing a lot of dancing, but that's not going to get you any yardage. Carrying it was Carter, Marquise Carter. And uh, I think that was Jadis who got in there first. He got some help from Bo Bosch. Number 90, Andy Lubadov, you get a good look at him. Just the penetration up the field. Made the running back stop and stutter, and then you get the pursuit. Watch the left side here. Lubadov gets the pressure up the field by staying in his gap. That's what John Garrett talks about, gap integrity. Stay in the B gap. You're not going to make the play, but you turn it back to your buddies inside. Great play by the senior D lineman. Now they're going to say they lost a couple of yards on the play, so it brings up a second and 12. Back to throw, Charlonzio will tuck it under, and oh, he gets Bumble. Bo Bosch is in there. Lafayette thinks they have the football. They're going to say he was down, and no fumble on the play. The headline's been rushed in and said he was down. There'll be a gain of two right back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, if you're Joe Susan, you got to be concerned about Charlonzio putting the ball on the ground right here. He gets it tucked away, and then he's down before Bo Bosch rips it out. But they had three fumbles in the first half. They only lost one. He's definitely down. Watch right here. You're going to see there, and the knee is on the ground, and then the ball comes out. Say Lafayette again. Third down and 10. This is where they usually like to bring heat. Brandon Bryant coming off the weak side here. And they're coming. They are coming up the middle, rushing out of there. Is Charlonzio firing, and that's an incomplete pass, and Lafayette will take over after the punt as great pressure came from Keith Earl. Earl adjusts the sophomore, but it seems like when he's in there, we call his name. Yeah, he and Ryan Barnett are the two best exterior pass rushers along with Bo Bosch, but he just dips and rips and watch him get to the edge. Wow, great job right there along with Jerry Poe as well. So Lafayette doing their job defensively. No yards for Bucknell on that offensive series. Again, Joey Chenoweth looking for a big punt return, Joe. Should get good field position here as Joey will camp under this one at the 36. No, he didn't call for a fair catch. And he almost escaped, but it will go back to the 34-yard line as that was a 45-yard punt. Tackle was made by Ben Richard. And look, Joey's trying to maybe throw his hand up, but at the last second he goes, I think I got enough room here. Well, half a step away. We've seen a bunch of players for Lafayette being a half a step away, and I go back to that huge play on third down and three. C.J. Emil stepping out of that play. Let's take a look at Lafayette's last drive, and you're going to be shocked. It's almost all on the ground. Yeah, this is that, again, Selwyn Simpson, good body angle. That's the breakaway run by C.J. And then C.J. again putting his foot in the ground. Selwyn Simpson wants him to get into the uh, second level as we get back here to the action after the touchdown. First and 10 from the 34 of Bucknell. Tie ball game. Lafayette with the only offensive touchdown in the game. Selwyn Simpson will carry and just get back to the line of scrimmage. He's hemmed in and then tackled by Nick Zarkowski, the defensive tackle. And Lafayette continuing to stay with the run here. Eisler comes out. You get Taggart checked in. Again, Lafayette has had success with the quick throws to the outside. Let's see if John Garrett stays with that ability for them just to get the ball out quick to the edge and again Matt Mrazek down here single coverage now he looks over the defense makes a call snap he's going to step back he's going to look he's going to fire he's got his man Matt Mrazek good call by Mike Joseph as that class is up to the 41 not a first down however Tackle is made by Brian Marine as they will mark it at the 42-yard line, a gain of eight. Two yards to go for a first down. Oh, just the back shoulder fade there. This is a throw that O'Malley, we've seen some of his best throws when he sets his feet and fires to the outside. He did it a couple times in the Holy Cross game to keep uh, drives alive. And Matt Mrazek runs the stop comeback right there, the back shoulder better than anybody in the league. Third and two. Big third down play for Lafayette. Again, Mrazic single coverage at the bottom. And the ball, big hole. And that will be, oh, oh my, what a great tackle. Oh, what a good tackle that time by Ben Richard. 
Boy, that hole looked huge, and it closed just as quickly. Lafayette's a yard shy of a first down. Watch scrape. This is called scraping as a linebacker. You just read across, and you mirror the running back. You're unblocked to the line to the ball, and CJ even thought he was going as well. But that is a fantastic play by Ben Richard. We talked about him at the top of the show. One of the best linebackers, him and Brandon Bryant. You're seeing two great, great linebackers, and a great job by him there to keep CJ from picking it up. Our 13th punt of the game. Six by each team, now seven by Lafayette. Fair catch is called for and collected by Alan Butler. And they'll mark it at the 11 yard line. A terrific punt again by Michael Turk. That's a 46 yard punt. So Bucknell, they started the first two drives on their 20. They'll start this one on their 10 yard line. They only had four first downs in the entire first half. And they got one late. The last play of the yes. first half was so the first three. down, yeah. Well, you kind of get the feeling that this Bucknell offense, they, they have to find some, some rhythm. They really haven't had any rhythm all day long. They had it early with some play-action pass, but the inability of them to run the football with fresh knock and some of their running running backs, remember their, their number one running back is out of the game. He has not showed up to play today. He's been hurt. Fresh knock is in there now. He'll get the ball, and he's not going to find much running room, although he does a nice cutback that got him a few yards before Matt Rothrock was there to bring him down. And a gain of three. Fresh knocks a big kid. He had a big game a couple of years ago for for Bucknell at Bucknell. A couple of touchdowns. A guy that they uh, put a lot of emphasis on here as their bigger running back. And Joey DeFlorio, 23. Is not here today playing uh, for injury, so Fresh knocks the guy. Bucknell has won three in a row. They beat Lafayette 42-17 last year. Back to throw. Carlanzio, he's getting pressure. He's looking, looking, throws it away. Good coverage downfield by Lafayette. Good pressure that time by Lafayette. In there was Lavelle Ramsey. There's that depth we find in that defensive line. We call a lot of different names. There you get a look at Brandon Bryant. Yeah, watch the outside. Ramsey's going to disconnect right here and take a good angle, and that allows the upfront pressure by Brandon Bryant, who had slipped through late there. So no, really no room for uh, for the quarterback, uh, Charlanzio, to escape. He's got to throw the football away. And big third down and six here. Man free for Lafayette. So pressure coming. Everybody's got to do their job in that movement by the wide receiver down here at the bottom. It's going to have a procedure penalty here against Bucknell as Full moving start. was Justin Bethea. Number 11, five-yard penalty, third down. That's the third penalty against Bucknell for 15 yards. And now what it was a uh, third and seven now becomes a third and 11. No excuse there for Justin. He'll tell you that. He's coming out of the game right now. You're a wide receiver. You're not listening for the count. All you're doing is setting your feet, and you have your eyes inside on the football, so you're going on the snap. So no excuse there. Guy's been a little quiet now for Bucknell lately. Jack Horan mm -hmm. made a couple catches early. early and hasn't really done much late. And again, Lafayette's going to be man-free here. Everybody locked up with a free safety in the middle of the They're field. They're coming again. Brandon Bryant with a lick, but that that's a good throw by Charlonzio. Brandon Bryant got there a split second late. As making the catch was Andrew Podbielski. And coming up and hitting him immediately was Trent Crossan. But he just got to where he needed to get, the 20-yard line, a gain of 11. Yeah, good pressure up the middle here. Watch Brandon. He's going to kind of slip through, unblock, but give Charlonzio a lot of credit right there. He just stepped up, held his ground, and then hit Pobliski right through the center of the field for the first down. This is a quickly moving third quarter as we're down to 2.45 to go. Bucknell back to throw, and again, Stepping up, Charlonzio, he takes a pretty good lick at the 23-yard line. He'll pick up three on the play, and there's Brandon Bryant again to make the tackle. And he was kind of looking for the drag route that time by Kyle Keener, 17. So they were trying to clear things out and then bring Keener underneath. And one of the linebackers, not sure if it was Michael uh, uh, Root on the other side, got a piece of Keener and didn't allow him to get the drag route there. And then he just got, got what he could, picked up good yardage for what should have been a sack. From the 23, third and seven. Make it second and seven. Last corners for Lafayette here. Here comes a quick pitch to the outside. Got the corner. And that's going to be a good run for Bucknell. It's carrying the football is Fresh Knock. Fresh Knock will get it to the 35-yard line. 
Move the chains on a gain of 12. And Lafayette sideline looking for a hold here. Watch the end of the line of scrimmage. You see a couple guys right there, and that was Ryan Barnett. He was getting held right around the chest there. He couldn't disengage, and that was the soft corner. Lafayette corners bailing, and good job by Freshnock to get the edge. So they've moved the ball from their own 10 out to the 35-yard line. And the ball off. Freshnock again with a cut this time. Puts his head down, lowers his shoulder, and picks up three before he is uh, brought down by Jadis, Anthony Jadis, with the tackle. And Labadev. So Bucknell right now doing a little bit better job on first down, picking up a few yards, not a lot, but staying on schedule. Second down and six, second down and seven. It's pretty much still on schedule. Allows you to throw the ball quick to the outside or even run the football and bring up those manageable third downs. So Lafayette's got to make a play here to get them off schedule. Back to throw, firing. And on his knees making the catch, but it will be good for a first down. As a catching the football is Jack Haran making the tackle, getting credit for it will be Phil Parra, a gain of seven. And Lafayette just kind of soft on the corners. We've seen this from Lafayette a few times. They, the corners bail a little bit early, and when they get out of there, it's just a really a quick, easy check for Charlanzio. Almost an automatic with these wide receivers. They see a, a corner that's bailing out, giving cushion. They're going to run it down and break it out for a couple yards, and they did that for the first down. By far the longest drive in terms of number of plays in the game for Bucknell. Charlanzio back. He wants to go downfield and throws it right to Lafayette. Making the catch is Trent Crossan. His first interception of the season, and I don't think Charlanzio saw him at all as he threw the ball right to him. And Lafayette will get the ball with 21 seconds to go in the third quarter. The second turnover in the ball game by Bucknell. And that big mistake there by Charlanzio. This is the exact same play that they ran in the first half. Watch him. He's going to come back along with the long drag route. And in the first half, Trent Crossan got turned around and never found the crosser. This time he just sank and got depth underneath the receiver, Kyle Keener. So two plays, and I think Crossan. The Wiley veteran there, he, he understood that I've seen this play before. I've seen play action. I've seen the drag come behind me, and he did a great job there, sank for the interception. So let's see what the Leopards can do with this turnover. They got a fumble recovery deep in Bucknell territory and could not do anything with it. Here they give it to Selwyn Simpson, looking for a little bit of a hole. There's not much there. And I don't think they're going to give him credit to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard. And there is big Abdullah Anderson out of Galloway, New Jersey, making the tackle. He is such a good football player. Had a lot of accolades last year. And he missed a little bit of a, some time this year with a knee injury as the uh, third quarter will fall. Well, that third quarter, third quarter was quarter. highlighted by a couple of Lafayette running backs. We have not said that much this season. C.J. Emile, he's got the ball there. And the final run for the touchdown, Selwyn Simpson was tied at 7-all. Can the Leopards maintain their position at the top of the Patriot League? They're tied 7-7 with the Bison of Bucknell as we approach the final 15 minutes of the fourth quarter. Lafayette looking at a second and 11 from their own 44-yard line. That's Taggart moving around. And a slow snap. That didn't help. And they get the ball underneath, but it's not caught. Palumbo dropped the football. Wouldn't have had any yardage anyway. Joe Laura was all over him. That snap took a while to get there. Yeah, and I think the cadence right now, I think if, if, if uh, you can get your freshman quarterback to change the cadence up a little bit, Bucknell is right on the snap of the ball. So as soon as Donnelly's getting it out of his hand, he's getting pressure, and therefore it's affecting the snap. It's happened a couple times today. But you got to change the snap count. You can't always go on hit. You can't go on the second sound. You've got to be able to change the snap count up and delay this defensive line from getting a jump off the ball. Emil in the backfield with O'Malley. Probably it's had their best rushing game of the season. 85 yards coming in. And there's a nice hole. Opened up and Emil can't stay on his feet. As I think he probably would have been tackled anyway, Ben Richard again gets down around his ankles, and the Lafayette punting unit will come onto the field. That was a pickup of five yards. Yeah, people at home probably saying, third down and 11, why are we not throwing the football? But we've seen John do this before, play the field position game. He's getting great play out of his defense. Bucknell's offense has really had not moved the football at all, except for a few plays here 
at the end of the third quarter. So John's going to play a little field position. This game doesn't look any different than the 10-7 win over yep. Holy Cross and the 14-10 win over Fordham. Rely on your defense and get some points late. Getting away a kick rather quickly. And watch out. It's going to be not covered up yet. Ooh, there's a big block thrown down there by Brian Marine. Brian Marine really laid one on Yazir Thomas. And Yazir is getting up slowly and groggily as making the tackle was Jerry Poe. And let's hope Yazir is all right. Yeah, and I think that was one of those blocks where he's a defenseless, uh, defenseless, uh, defenseless guy. So I'm, I'm wondering why that was not called right there. One was on Jack Lamb right there. Jack Lamb got up and was wondering why it wasn't called. Brian Marine put that. And also Yasir Thomas, so two very questionable blocks by the punt return team. But Lafayette, again, defensively, got to be good on first down to keep this team off schedule. I saw the block uh, as it happened. It looked like a clean block to me, just a hard block. Freshnock steps away from a potential tackler, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage as the Lafayette defensive line doing a good job. Bo Bosch comes up to make the tackle, loss of a yard. There it is. That's the first down play you need. So Bo Bosch avoiding the block at the pet point of the tack, makes Freshnock make a cut in the backfield. Freshnock doesn't have that quick foot speed that C and TJ Appeal has, but he created the play and then allowed his friends to rally for the big play on minus one. Ball back on the 19-yard line. And how much confidence does Coach Susan have in Charlonzio deep in his own territory? Well, not on this play. Instead, he's going to give it to his running back. And not much there. Again, uh, coming up to make the tackle. Brandon Bryan, he got some help this time from Brian Marine. Carter was the ball carrier. And he's, he'll pick up three yards and bring up a third and eight. Yeah, great job on the corner by Jerry Post setting the edge and not allowing Fresh Knock to get out there. This is a drop back situation. So Lafayette's going to get their best pass rushers on the field. You're going to see Ryan Barnett down here at the bottom. You can see Keith Earl. He's going to be on the nose. Demetrius Breedlove to the boundary along with Jerry Poe. So let's see what kind of pressure the Lafayette brings here. Lafayette already with interception seven and eight on the season. They'll go to a screen pass. And they will not get the first down because of Brandon Bryant. What a stick again by Brandon Bryant. You do not get another yard when he hits you. Wow, Brandon was inside out to the football, and this looked like it had some room to be set up with the screen, as you saw Charlonzio kind of double take on the throw. But once he dropped it off, Brandon Bryant inside out, and you're, like Gary said, you're not getting any more yards when he puts you on the turf. Joey Charlonzio right around the 35, if he could ever get the ball quickly. We've seen some great punts today, bad snap. Carter made the catch, and this ball does not take much of a Bucknell bounce. It will be dead at the 31-yard line. We'll call timeout. Lafayette has the football tied at seven. Otis. We are back. A little bit of a haze here. There's a little bit of haze on the scoreboard. At a 7-7, who's going to win this one? They are reviewing this play right now. And Mike, I don't, I don't think Lafayette touched this ball, but what, what are they looking at here exactly? Well, right there, you get, they're trying to see if Otis Thrasher got pushed into the ball right there by the defender and the defender, John Fox, covering on special teams. Otis did not touch that football. No, but he did not. Stepped over, but he's got to hear poison, poison. Here's the package now I was looking for. Let's take a look at these two plays. This is the play action pass that he overthrew. And you can see right there, Trent Crossan. He didn't get all the way underneath. Now, this is the same play again to the other side, and Trent makes the play. So that's the thought I'm talking about, the, the smartness of these Lafayette players to recognize formation and recognize personnel and playing ability. I tell you what, that's a great play by Crossan, and it stopped the big drive where it looked like Bucknell had something going. That's certainly part of uh, John Garrett's philosophy. Never think about the last play. It's always the next play. I don't care what happened. If it's yep. bad, it's bad. It's the next play that you have to worry about. And well, let's get a report from the referee here. After review, the ball was touched by the kicking team at the 35-yard line. Therefore, the ball will be placed at the 35. First down. Here's John. Quickly, injury report on Yazir Thomas. He's okay. He went into the coordinated health center tent that we have here. Checked for a concussion. It actually was his neck that got tweaked a little bit, but he's good to go. We'll be back in on the next defensive series. John will have a medical degree by the end of wow. the season. I believe he's at least the PA, right? <laughs> 
He's our sideline assistant yes, for sure. Is. First and 10 from the 35. So that's where they marked the ball dead, even though it ended up on the 31 yard line as Selwyn Simpson is in the backfield. 12.07 to go in regulation. Eight in the box now. Mafia puts eight in the box to block. <laughs> and it got them about four yards. With more blockers, you get a little bit more opportunity. Tackle is made by Simeon Page. Simeon Page has been all over the field today. Good football player. You know, for Lafayette's offensive line, such much malign, but you know, Hampton and Donnelly, they they want to, offensive linemen want to run the football. I saw Donnelly come off the field after the touchdown, basically giving you the kind of feed us. You know, mm -hmm. you, you got to get a rhythm, not only when you pass pro, but when you run block. So uh, you know, a couple plays in a row has, has kind of helped them out. This is the critical play. Second and six. You need to pick up four, five yards here. Who was offsides there? Is that's that... in, in neutral zone engagement, I think. I think that's the defense. Yep, that's against the defense. Yeah, I think the linesman is looking for some help. But when you step in the neutral zone, you don't. Ha if you make contact, don't make contact, get back. No call, but Lafayette moved, Hampton moved because of the movement by the D lineman. There's some discussion here as the... Offside, yes. defense, number 40, five-yard penalty, second down. That's the way we saw it, that's the way the officials saw it. Well, you wanted five, well, you got it. I we got didn't get it. a play, but we got the five yards. So now it's second and one. You can call yeah. anything you want here, Mr. Joseph. I love second and one. But I love the fact that let's get the first down. Okay. So many teams, you play too many games here. You know, like John said, let's do one play at a time. The first thing's first. Let's get the first down. And because the fact that you can do anything may loosen up the defense a little bit. And maybe you pop a big play. I wonder if the top's got to be on the line of scrimmage. Thank you, Joe. We get some motion. they got to hurry. Ooh, they just got the play off. Cutting up inside, and that'll be a first down, I believe. It's very close, right on the line. Are they going to move the chain? I think they're going to say no, he didn't make it. Yeah, he needed to get to the 45. Now, I, what I would do is get to the line of scrimmage quick here and run a quarterback sneak, because you only need about eight inches. So you get to the 45-yard line. I only think I turn around and hand it off. You, you, you've done things where your quarterback's under center, so a quarterback sneak to an open area to the top. I don't think I even turned it around and handed it off deep. Well, they'll hand it off and get nothing. Oh, my. So Lafayette gets a five-yard penalty advantage and cannot pick up the yard for the first down. The punting unit will have to come back onto the field as they lose a yard. And again, too much penetration. They allow Bucknell a very aggressive defense. Watch, they come off the left side here, and nobody blocks the, the end guy. And I think that was off, off the corner. That might have been Mark Piles. It was Mark Piles yeah. who got in there. Again, you, you only have eight inches, so quarterback sneak with one nose guard, nobody in the front side A gap. That's got to be almost an automatic, kind of like Tom Brady. Another beautiful punt by Turk. And it drives all the way back. Allen Butler, and he's not going anywhere. Great coverage by Lafayette. That's Trent Crossan with the coverage. It's Bucknell pinned deep in their own territory when we come back. I, I will gladly turn over the trivia job to you if you want. <laughs> no, thank you. That is a thankless job. All right, Bucknell with the football. First and 10 from their own six-yard line. Can't let him breathe. Can't let him out. You see pressure coming right Hand there. Hand it off, and that's a nice first down play if you're a Bucknell fan. As coming up to make the tackle is Phil Parham, but he's the strong safety, and Carter is going to get the ball out to the 13-yard line. So it's a gain of seven. Similar to what Lafayette did on their last drive. Picked up good yardage, got that first down, or excuse me, got the uh, extra yardage, but uh, big back back there running the ball, similar to Selwyn Simpson. Second and three. There's a pitch to the outside. And that will be a first down. Carter again carrying and coming up. It's got to be 33. He makes a lot of tackles, Brandon Bryant. Good for a first down to the 18. Pick up a five. Yeah, impressed now with uh, Marquise Carter, the running back. He's a big kid, very similar to Selwyn. And 
and uh, got them out of that hole. They were really pinned down deep inside, and they got out of there with two runs, which is impressive. This is similar to the way they started the uh, the game with two tight ends and two wides. They've not scored an offensive point in this ball game. Oh, look at that! What a play by number 90, breaking everything down was Andy Lobedev, and we have this one on replay. Watch how he destroys the blocking to get into the backfield. Well, he just stays in his gap, and he uses that right arm, similar to the play we had going the other direction. Just watch him ride the offensive lineman and penetrate. He just gets up the field, stays in his gap. There's nowhere for Carter to go. And just fantastic job. This is a defensive line that's done a better job in the Patriot League games of getting off blocks, and Lobadov's a senior, played a lot of snaps. Second and 14. I create a third down and 10 or more here. This time they'll fake it to Carter and have a wide open receiver. That's a good stick by Jerry Poe. Catching the football. What 45, uh, number 45 it was, Alex Twyford, tight end. His first catch of the day at the 25, a gain of 11 yards. Good call that by Joe Susan and his offensive coordinator there to, you've run the ball three or four times coming out of your own end zone. And then you run the play action, so Lafayette loses contain there. They don't give up the first down, but this uh, probably the biggest play here. 7-7 seven, seven game, Lafayette wants the football back, and they want it with good field position. You allow them to get another first down, flip now the they flip the field, correct. And the ball off, gone wide, and getting the first down. Coming up and making the hit was Trent Cross, and Carter gets the first down. As they'll move the change to the 31, a gain of six. Yeah, Tamir Jones, number 10, had a shot at making that play prior to the first down marker. Trent Crossan does a nice job knocking him out of bounds. Watch number 10, Tamir Jones. He's going to come from the top left of your screen here, unblocked. Right here, he gets off, he just has an opportunity, and he misses the tackle. Got to get his head across as you see Crossan finish him off there. But again, the chance to flip the field here for Bucknell if they can pick up another first down or two. And all they need is a field goal. At the very least, they want to just keep taking time off the clock and not give Lafayette much time to work with once they get the football. They will move this one to the 34 or 35. We'll call it the 35. Brandon Bryant in on the tackle. Gain of four. Yeah, right now, Lafayette defense, they've been out there a, a good amount of time versus the run. So Bucknell has made a commitment to the run right here, and they need a play. They got it on the last set of downs, second down and 14, but gave up two uh, two plays, the quick pass to the outside on the boot and then the run. But Bucknell committed right now to running the football. Second and six. Calonzo back to throw. He'll fire. He finds his man. and Looks like Alan Butler making that catch. Tackle made by Michael Root. At the 45-yard line, a gain of 10. Lafayette brings in some fresh defensive linemen. And it looked like there by Yusir Thomas got picked <laughs> by number two, Alec, Alan Butler. But then Charlanzio came off it. He had the flat guy. And then Butler just sat down in that gap created as uh, Yusir Thomas tried to get out to the flat. So Lafayette playing a little bit of zone here. They're going to have to bring some pressure. They're going to have to bring some blitzes here and get in the backfield, make some plays versus the run, or get to the quarterback. Can't sit back and allow Bucknell to take this into field goal range. Looks like a Carter run. It will be. And he will just get back to the line of scrimmage. Brandon Bryant there to make the tackle. Getting up slowly is one of their big offensive linemen, Noah Stevenson, the right tackle. As he got up very gingerly. Michael Root there as well. Watch Brandon Bryant come right through the front side A gap right here. Going to blitz. Boom. Takes on the blocker. Gets off. And then you see him. Watch the separation here. Boom, takes on the block, gets off quickly, diagnoses plays. That's a play Lafayette needed. I, I expect uh, Coach Thompson here again to bring more heat, kind of put some pressure on the guys in the secondary to play man to man, but Lafayette's second down to 10 here. This second half is flying by. There's a quick play. Did the ball hit the ground? I don't think so. They're going to call it a good catch. That was by Podbielski. Brandon Bryant in on the tackle. Gain of four. Good job by the Bucknell. Remember, this drive started down around the 10-yard line. They've done a good job moving the ball out primarily with the runs and some good play action pass. So, you know, they feel like they're in this game too. They're at 7-7. Seven, seven. Might be the most important down. play right here, Mike. Absolutely. You've got to have some time if you get the ball back. We're not a quick strike offense right. either. 
And, and the first down brings you across the 50. Yeah, you certainly don't want to give him an opportunity to kick a field goal. Back to throw, Charlonzio fires and it's caught. Well designed play, as that's Andrew Podbilski who makes the catch. Tackled by Trent Crossan. He turned to his left, and that's exactly where the ball was when he made the turn. 11 yard gain. Yeah, Podbilski just kind of played off. He went out, and then he kind of hit uh, right into Crossan and then turned back. A good route, almost a back shoulder throw there. Crossan was trying to figure that maybe Podbielski would go inside, but that's a great route and a good delivery. Lafayette brought the pressure, but the ball came out quick. Have to figure a Carter run here again to keep that clock going. It's at 325. Here comes Carter coming to the left side, and he's not going anywhere. As a big hit coming up and sticking him and putting him down is Jack Lamb. There'll be a loss of a yard. And yeah, kind of Lafayette. Got three timeouts in their pocket here, but you can't afford to use those right now. So you see Jack Lamb, great read by him. He's a kid you're going to see in years to come. Great special teamer, but watch him pop through right there. Boom. Nice job. Lamb just a sophomore out Down of Doylestown, there. PA. 6'1", 220 pounds. Second and 11, under three minutes. Clock running. And I would expect some sort of play action here again. Garlanzio back. He wants to run with the ball. And he's got a little bit of running room. He'll get pushed out of bounds. And pick up a couple of yards. It'll be a third and eight. He does a little favor for Lafayette by going out of bounds. If he throws that ball, it stops the clock. If he runs it out of bounds, it stops the clock. But uh, right now they're actually going to run the clock here and say he was in bounds when he went out. I mean, that's got to stop the clock. That's strange. But right now, big play here. Again, just on the verge of field goal range. They are not in field goal range at the moment. Burdick is their field goal kicker. He was four for four last week against Bucknell. His longest is 46 yards. Oh, a perfect call. They get the screen pass, and that one was the exact call they needed. Lafayette was blitzing, and they dropped the ball down into the hands of Carter, and Carter takes it all the way to the 25-yard line, a gain of 13. Now you said it, Gary. Just a perfect call, and great job by Charlanzio just retreating as long as he could. And you kind of wonder, if you're playing man-to-man, -man, who's got the running back in that man-to-man, -man, whether they pressed him at the line of scrimmage, somebody kind of failed to pick up Carter out of the backfield on the screen. They are in Barrick's di Burdick's distance right now. Here comes Carter. Carter will get inside the 25. Will pick up a couple of yards. In on the tackle is Fox. Lafayette we're checking 34. Team Chuma. Timeout. 30 this is second be timeout. A tough one to swallow if Bucknell can keep this football and kick this field goal because this is the one drive that Bucknell has uh, has really moved the football the entire game. Well, let's go back to the trivia question, which Mike didn't like at all. On October 29, 2011, Lafayette played one of the strangest games ever here at Fisher Stadium. What was so unique about that contest? You'll remember it because it was the most difficult game I think we ever had oh. to call. Couldn't see the field. Couldn't see the field. Couldn't see the field. I mean, there was so much snow. It was a freak snowstorm and uh, just incredible power outages all over the valley. But you couldn't see the field. And it was, I think, uh, you know, one week from this date. Yes. But it was in October, and I think the worst snowstorm in yeah. history in and, October. And the Leopards did not play well, if I remember correctly. And, and I saw the forecast for next week. Yeah. They're talking about there's a chance of snow next week. <laughs> the Almanac. Pull out the Almanac. Lafayette needs a big play right here. You've got to expect right now, you've got to sell out versus the run. So everybody's got a gap. Everybody's got to make a play. Maybe Lafayette can get a TFL here. Tackle for a loss. And just put them on the verge of maybe a 45 to 47 yard field goal. They'll call an immediate timeout again. Probably just want to get the ball to a point where they can kick the field goal. Well, I would think the next play will be to run it into the middle of the field. As Lafayette calls another timeout, Time another out. Brandon Bryant Lafayette. tackle. Second for the and half. they lose a couple of yards on that play. And it's going to be third down and 10. I don't think Bucknell is going to put the ball in the air here. If anything, it's going to be a quick throw, maybe a screen to the outside or something. But uh, go back to that screen play. There's a beautiful call by Bucknell's offensive coordinator. I expect Jarlanzio to just take the snap and run to the middle of the field. Could, yeah. I mean, you're still looking at about a 47-yard or 42-yard field goal. Well, he's got a 46. As yep. I said, uh, Burdick was 4-for-4 four four last week, which tied a record 
when they knocked off Cornell in that ball game. That was that one opened their eyes a little bit as they beat Cornell 26-18. As we go back to what Marquise Carter did on this drive. Yeah, all third down conversion. Remember, this drive started well inside the 10-yard line, but this is the big play here, the screen. And, uh, Lafayette, uh, well, we got to make a play here. They are going to throw the ball. They're going to fire it downfield, and they just throw it away. And Charlonzo ends up on his tush after he threw the ball, and here we go. It'll be the right foot of John Burdick, a six foot, 185 pound senior. He is eight for 10 on the season. He has made his last four in the last ball game. Yep. Well, he's going to spot this right around the 40. It'll be a 42, yeah, 42 yard field goal. The holder is Haran, the wide receiver. Lafayette will see if they can get some sort of penetration, at least kind of throw off the timing here. You've got the best view right there with that camera behind us. It is Short. up and it is no good. Did it get tipped? Do you see her, Thomas? It looked like it might have gotten tipped, but big play by the defense. Now the Leopards have a minute and 19 seconds and one timeout left, or will go OT. Watch it here. It just looks like he doesn't get all of it. It looks like kind of my nine iron. He just gets the ground a little bit. Let's see if you see her, Thomas, number four. I, I think you see her might have got a fingertip on that. Might have gotten it. Look at him. Watch him get up. Yeah, he did. He got a piece yeah, of knew. it. He knew. He didn't even have to it. look. He didn't even turn around to look. You see her, Thomas. You know, we saw Lafayette get a field goal blocked on that edge. We send a guy through the wing and outside the wing. That time, you see her, Thomas just went right through and got a tip on the ball. Didn't even have to look. And now it falls on the Lafayette offense. See if they can move the football here. But you don't want to do anything and turn the ball over. You want to be careful. You got overtime in your back pocket. C.J. Emil is in the backfield. He'll get the football. He's got a hole. And C.J. will go up to the 32, pick up seven. Lafayette give the coaches a lot of credit. They did a great job using their timeouts to get this possession. Second and four. Well, they only gave him six on the play, and that pass is not caught. That pass was just poorly thrown that time, yeah. intended for C.J. Emil. Yeah, and sometimes you think Sean's got to stay in there, take the hit. Step forward again and off of his back foot and that ball just kind of falls incomplete not the worst thing in the world You stop the clock But a first down here again I'm looking for something down the middle of the field that stops the clock You still have a timeout so you can use the entire field, but they haven't used Dylan Wadsworth vertically down the field Guess who the last overtime game was again? But no, it was Back in 2014 Back to fire, and the ball off the hands of Rocco Palumbo. Now Lafayette has to punt the ball. Again, this ball just kind of sails. Oh, Palumbo's open underneath, and Lafayette uses basically, what, 17, 21 seconds off the clock? Wow, tough, tough situation. Take a look at it right here again. Watch the footwork of the freshman quarterback. Not when he stepped into and it just got away from a little bit to the outside. So another punt. This is the 10th Lafayette punt. This one is low and will immediately go out of bounds as they'll mark it at the 33-yard line. That's just a 35-yard punt. Yeah, not very good one that time. He kind of rushed it a little bit, Turk. He had some time back there. The only thing different right here is Bucknell's going to have to throw the football they ran the ball. They had the, uh, the chance to run the football with the clock on their side with the last possession. But with 51 seconds, you're going to have to throw the football down the field. They have all three timeouts, so an opportunity for them. They are probably approximately 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe 45 yards away from another field goal attempt. November 1st, 2014, Bucknell beat Lafayette 27-24 in overtime. At Bucknell, yeah. Remember that one. First and 10 from the 33. Carlanzio back to fire over the middle. He's got his man. That's a good open field tackle. It's coming up to make that hit for the Leopards is Michael Roots. Gain it just two. And, and if you're Joe Susan here, do you want to go to overtime away or do you want to continue to press the ball down the field? Because Carlanzio has had a 
situations where, again, he throws the ball into traffic as well. They have all their timeouts left. If they can get a first down, they can certainly continue to move downfield with 29 seconds on the clock. But here's a big third down for them, third yeah, and eight. Absolutely. And he's backing up three or four possessions in the last minute and a half of the game. So this is a big possession for them. Do they want to give it away? And then special teams wise, do you go after the punt? with 29 seconds, say 26 seconds left on the clock and try to block it. Hinchin came extremely close to blocking the last punt and they had a snap that was on the ground earlier in the game. Leopards are blitzing, there's movement by Bucknell. This will be against the Bison. Full start, offense, number 71. Five yard penalty, third down. That's freshman Justin Falcone who is in there Replacing, uh, I think, Josh Yoder. Yeah, watch Falcon. It's going to make a little move here. There it is. That's the false start. And now the question comes, do you want Charlonzio to put the ball in harm's way on third and 13? So I'd Lafayette, love to see him do Yeah, that. well, and, and that's the thing. I mean, if you're Joe Susan, do you want to go to overtime? Or do you want he's put the ball on the ground three times today, and he's thrown an interception. So he's been responsible for close to four turnovers today. Third and 13. No, oh, we're going to hand the ball off. Got to run the ball. Trying to get outside is Carter. He's not going to go anywhere. And in fact, he'll lose yardage. Back to the 27 yard line. And the clock is stopped as Lafayette will use their Lafayette final timeout. Uses their final timeout. Very interesting here. He got timeout. fourth down and over 15. So if you rough the kicker, it's a 15 yard penalty. So it's going to be close to a first down. But. You know, Lafayette, I think they're going to, I think you have to come after the punt. I just don't think there's any way you can't come after the punt. Well, you've already had a field goal tipped by Yazir Thomas. It will be Joey Chenoweth who will go back to receive the punt. And Alex Peachin has been outstanding. Seven punts, 42.6 yards per punt. Michael Turk on the other side, 10 punts, 41.1 yards. What a time maybe for a great punt return, huh? Well, Lafayette's got 10 guys up, nine up, two guys hold on. They're looking for a punt return. The possibility of Joey Chenoweth to get this ball down around the 30-yard line for their own field goal attempt. Good snap, and they'll get it away easily. And a good high punt. Joey will not call for the fair catch, he will. At the 30-yard line, 43-yard punt. And let's see what we have here in terms of what we need for Jeffrey Cordenbrock. His longest field goal is a 43-yarder. I remember and that. Remember that one? That I was remember that one. Last play of the game against Holy Cross. Yeah. You know, this again. This is a situation where you're both playing for overtime, and now I'm trying to think about who has the advantage of overtime. We're in with the home team. And uh, you flip the coin again, and uh, you want to be on defense first. So we'll see if we get to that point. But right now, we got 14 seconds left. To get a 43-yarder, you have to get the ball down to the 26-yard line of Bucknell. It's a long way away, 44 yards away. Hand it off. That's not going anywhere. C.J. Emil. And the tackle made by uh, Abdullah Anderson. Yeah, here we go. We're going OT. So the Lafayette offense scores one touchdown. The Bucknell defense scores one touchdown. And we are going to go overtime. It is 7-7 seven, seven in this very important Patriot League matchup. You know, and time. Mike, uh, you know, the ball starts on the 25-yard line. Each team gets a possession. And uh, your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are obviously the toss is so important. If you lose the toss, or excuse me, win the toss, you want to be on defense first because you want to know what you need to do. And then offensively or defensively in overtime, you have to be aggressive. You want to create a first and long or a second and long. If teams stay on schedule, they pick up four and five yards on first down in overtime, they're already within field goal range feeling comfortable, and now it opens up the playbook. So defensively, the most important down in overtime is first down, okay? And we'll see what the toss of the coin here as the Lafayette Leopard uh, captains are going to make their way out for the toss of this coin. Remember, Lafayette won the toss, took the ball early, but you retoss the coin here as John Garrett gets a little overtime uh, uh, talk with the referee. 
Mike, which team do you think, based on what we've seen here today, and of course we've watched the Leopards all year long, you, you get a sense either team has an advantage in overtime. Well, uh, both teams have run the ball well here in the second half, including a nice drive from Bucknell, which they think they should be on the bus right now with a 10-7 win. But Lafayette did run the ball well, so I think I expect to see Selwyn Simpson. I think both teams, this could turn out to be field goal, field goal in the first overtime. You don't have to go for two until the third overtime. So I, I don't think both team, either team is, it's that team that's going to take the chance to win the game and not lose the game that I think will come out on top. And from that standpoint, to answer your question, I think John Garrett, a little bit more of a gunslinger here, I think he may at home say, we got to make a play, a guy like Palumbo, Wadsworth, or a Mrazic. And C.J. Emil, who had six catches in the first quarter. If you're wondering when the last time Lafayette won an overtime game, it was back in 2011. They beat Colgate 37 to 24. That's when they returned a uh, interception for Harry a touchdown. Stafford. Here's the call. Going to overtime play now, right? Both teams will have an opportunity to have the ball. All right. Look, now you're the visitors. You get to call the toss. What do you call? Heads. He calls heads. Here we go. It is heads. So you have one. You can play offense, defense, or pick an end of the field. Defense. You want defense? Yep. Which end of the field do you want to play on? Uh, we want to defend this way. You want to go down this end? You want to try and score this way. So whatever way that is. We'll go that side. Okay. We're going to defend this way. Oh, no, you want to play down that end. Okay. You guys line up over there. Backward, backward, backward. No, they got to switch. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was saying we want to go in. First down. We want to go toward the scoreboard. There's more light down there. <laughs> Well, here we go. And then they when did you not score, win the toss that no. you want to win, no. so they'll count on the D. Well, you know what? It goes the other way, too. If you can put seven on the board, it's a huge advantage, and you would think you have a field goal in your pocket. I like playing that close because when you win the game, you run right into the Burger Varsity football house. <laughs> you don't have to run all over. They might want to run around <laughs> they, they may. win the game. Well, this is, uh, I mean, it doesn't get any more exciting. I love this. In high school, you go from the 10, in college, you go from the 25. I think the pros should do this, too. But move it to, like, say, the 35. I hate the fact in the pros that one that's team does not get the ball. No, that's I mean, a joke. I, I don't if care you what score, the other team, the other team does, doesn't get it. Yeah. You should give the other team an opportunity yeah. They could start it. it from the 35 or the 40. Because they can make field goals from 60 yards now in the right. pros. But All right, here we go. First play, first down, so important. It has been tough on the offenses to get any points. C.J. Emile in the backfield important down this down right here and they're blitzing back to throw O'Malley's got time he'll fire into the corner and it's intercepted and now on his feet and running the ball back and there's a lot of white shirts this is going to be run back oh my for a touchdown this game is over on one play A mob down there, a mob scene. We're trying to pick out who made that interception. Just an incredible play right there. Again, Lafayette, the first down, the most important play of overtime. Bucknell doesn't even have to take the field, but the pressure again up inside. O'Malley steps up, throws the ball into double coverage. Looking for Paraco Palumbo there. That looks like, I think that 18? was maybe Colin Genoff, the, the corner, number 10. And I'm not quite sure if it's 10 or if it looks like 10. It looks like Connor. That would be his That would be his second interception yeah. of the year. Double coverage, right in the double coverage. Great job by Connor, just coming over the top. It is Connor Genoff. And the secondary for Bucknell has won this football game. They did not score an offensive point. And their defense is going to win this for them. And that's where they came in as advertised. A good defense is Lafayette. Just an absolute heartbreaker. They don't give up an offensive point to Bucknell. Nope. But they do give up two interception returns for touchdowns. Sean throws his 12th interception of the year. And the Lafayette Leopards will suffer their first Patriot League defeat of the season by a 13-7 to score.